The story begins at night. Night fireflies fly around the lantern. It beckons them like a little sun. Though the lantern gives us light, we don't get as much as we'd like. Lonely girl standing under a streetlight waiting for someone. Just made an appointment to meet after work. Suddenly a glow appears from the fire behind her. Gradually the glow begins to illuminate everything behind her. This fiery thing makes a terrible crackling noise as it approaches the girl. And every time it gets bigger and louder. And now it's very close to her. The light is getting brighter and brighter. And the girl begins to feel the heat behind her. Suddenly she turns her head trying to figure out where all this warmth and light behind her is coming from. Behind her is a terrifying fire thing, some kind of evil monster, all engulfed in a fiery heat. He's come to take her life. For what seems like an instant, there's a blinding flash that lights up the whole place, and then there's no one else. The girl is gone, beautiful weather rainbow in the sky. Most likely a light summer rain has recently fallen. Fresh breeze disperses leaves from the trees, a simple house covered with shingles. Not much different from the others, it looks like a middle-class neighborhood. The news on TV reports that a woman was attacked by something on her way home last night. A woman was attacked last night. The TV that can be seen from the window of the house. It tells you the top stories of the past 24 hours. A little girl carrying a hot kettle. I have bright blue eyes and red ribbons in my hair. And she's drinking to herself. A voice calls out her name, Xiao Yu Yi, and someone's hand starts dragging her by the scruff of her neck. He's just giving up. The little girl can't even leave the medicine alone. He can't understand that the child is growing up and therefore hungry all the time. Xiao Yu explains to the young guy that she will only take one sip. She won't drink much. The young guy is very strict. He forbids her to do that. And immediately tells her to go apologize to Auntie Lin. A little girl complains that she is very hungry and wants to eat. So hungry that she can't even move. He clears his throat a little. And asks the little one. If she's that hungry. And she's so hungry for food. She can start eating carrots. The guy had a good trip and he poked the girl. The people of Jianghu describe carrots as ginseng root, and carrots are very nourishing. Xiao Yu caustically replied to the kid, that's why he looks just like a dried carrot, and the girl doesn't want to be like her. The guy got confused and asked her, so what does she want? What she wants? Usually when you're hungry, you don't choose. She wants instant noodles. Of course, they can't afford it now. It's expensive. Well, at least a little bit. The little girl dreams too much, Lu Xu said making a condescending expression on his face. But then Xiao Yu made concessions. It's okay if she doesn't get the noodles right now. But Lu Xu must then give her the small walnut he has hanging around his neck. He's holding her at arm's length. And that's the little troublemaker waving her arms around. He's explaining to her that it's not a nut. And it's been his jewelry since he went to the orphanage. Xiao Yu starts to berate him and squeals hysterically. Lu Xu is a bad man. He forbids her everything. And she starts biting Lu Xu's hand with her teeth. This surprises the young boy very much. And then he gives up. He says she talked him into it. He's going to buy her what she wants. She must have bitten him pretty good. She's very happy now. Little Pest is an ogre. She lets go of Lu Xu's hand. His hand is covered in her drool. And then she happily tells him that as soon as he told her he was going to buy it. She immediately craved the taste of beef stew. It was snowing. Beautiful white flakes fell from the sky in uncountable quantities on the earth, covering it with a white blanket. A dense snow haze appeared. It was like a thick veil of smoke. I couldn't see anything further than two meters away. There were dishes with meatballs on the table, although they looked more like small meatballs or meatballs. The sweet old lady has almost finished cooking dinner, so she asks Xiao Yu to wait for her brother Lu Xu to come back, so they can sit down and eat together. Exactly half a portion per person. The old lady let the baby eat a little more. She's a small child after all, so she'll give Xiao Yu an extra portion. She puts an extra piece from her plate into her brother's plate. It's very cold outside. My brother could use one extra patty. Xiao Yu is thinking about his marriage. They can't afford to eat meat as often as they would like. That's why she'll be generous today. You yourself blossom because of your kindness. Happy as an elephant. She prepared a plate of goodies for her brother. She's a good girl. But she doesn't forget about herself. So no more than three slices. I'll give the rest to her. She's hungry too. Some kind of rumbling sound was heard. Xiao Yu didn't like it very much, it ruined her mood a lot. She looks longingly out the window at the snow flying by, and she feels very sad. Why hasn't her brother come home yet? New Year's Eve is approaching. Lu Xu shoots beautiful fireworks on his cell phone while standing in the park, under the falling snow. He hopes that next New Year will be better. He gets a text message from his sister. She asks him if he bought the beef stew noodles as promised. He really wants to make his little sister happy, a real fireworks show for her. 
He loves her very much, and he wants to make her childhood happy. He takes a step at the crosswalk. He was crossing the road in the proper place. Suddenly he saw a bright light on his right side, which blinded him for a short period of time. It was a giant truck, coming straight at him. Either it had a brake failure or the driver was drunk or had a traffic violation. Nobody knows. There was a terrible thump. The boy's eyes were just covered with a red mist. It was his own blood. His body felt so weightless and light. The truck hit him like a toy ball, and he flew very high and far. The only thing he regretted, that he hadn't had time to fulfill all the promises he'd made to his little sister. That's all he cared about at the moment. I think he's dying. It's really hard to believe. The last thing that pops into his head is the image of his little sister. And then the shell of the walnut-shaped ornament begins to crack open. There's a bright light. It's as if there was something inside it all along, waiting to be discovered. The energy began to concentrate around Lu Xu's heart. His body transformed. It shone inside with thousands of little stars. His phone fell to the ground and got really banged up. The monitors cracked pretty badly. It's a shame about the equipment. The fireworks over the city look great. It's in full swing. It's a beautiful sight, majestic. His phone receives a message on his little sister Xiao Yu's phone. She is not happy and asks why he doesn't answer her. A video is uploaded with a salute to their correspondence history. Lu Xu wanted to cheer up his little sister a little. She asks if he bought her noodles before he went to shoot the fireworks. She asks him to remember that the noodles must have beef stew. Blood spreads on the asphalt. Snowflakes cover her. It's freezing fast. Xiao Yu keeps texting her brother Lu Xu. She's really hysterical and talking nonsense. The broken and blood-stained phone receives messenger messages. Xiao Yu begins to suspect that something is wrong and worries. Lu Xu is the main character in this story. A simple guy, an orphan from boarding school, like his little sister. Before the accident, his life hadn't really begun. But this year, everything will be different. He lies on the pavement in mud and his own blood. He feels no pain from the shock. His gaze is only directed to the sky, where the fireworks continue. His eyes are wide open. His pupils are still clear and not blurred. They reflect the beautiful flashes of fireworks. Lu Xu was lying like a pile of garbage in the roadway. The truck hit him hard, and he flew far away from the crosswalk. The truck driver started swearing a lot that he was a lousy guy. Allegedly, it's his fault, although he was approaching the crosswalk at a high rate of speed. He got out of the cab of the truck and started gibbering fearfully. He really didn't want this guy to be dead on New Year's Eve. Suddenly, Lu Xu's crippled, bloody hand began to clench. The truck driver was stunned with fear at what he saw. It's not something you see every day. Lu Xu was lying in a pool of his own blood and tried to get up. His body began to burn with tongues of flame. The truck driver was very much frightened. He started screaming like a madman who had seen a ghost. So he starts running away from the truck in the middle of the night. Lu Xu yells at him that he can't just walk away. He has to pay him back for the damage. Then he looks at his hand, which is covered in blood and dirt, but there are no fractures and no abrasions or wounds either. He's standing in the middle of the roadway, in a big pool of his own blood, and wonders why there's no pain, and why he's not dead. You don't live after something like that. And the snow just kept falling and falling. It was no longer just snowflakes, it was a snowfall. It covered the whole earth with a white blanket. Lu Xu walked home. There was a trail of blood behind him. His shoes were still soaked with his own blood, and it was clearly visible in the snow. Xiao Yu happily opened the doors, started to say that Auntie Lin had made delicious meat treats for them. But when she saw her brother in such a state, she marveled. It's not easy for a child. Her own older brother stood before her, covered in dirt and his own blood. Though he didn't have a bruise, a wound, or a scratch on him, he was completely whole. She asked, looking at Lu Xu, what had happened to him. Probably something terrible, judging from his appearance. The older brother replied to the younger sister that he was hit by a car. The man is okay, the car is not. Xiao Yu listened to him carefully and maintained a long silence. Then she started walking in her brother's bloody footsteps and questioning the blood of the car, how big the car was, whether they could pay it off. Lu Xu said he paid off the money he collected to take Xiao Yu to the festival. She started to get very offended by his explanation. She didn't like it. She's not a little kid. She understands everything. Her older brother smiled at her and told her he was joking. There were completely different people in the accident. And he walked by and helped them. This was a surprise to Xiao Yu. He didn't discuss anything with her. He just wanted to rest soon. Hot water splashing. It's steaming. Water always cleanses away all the bad things. Lu Xu pours bucket after bucket of hot water on himself to properly wash off all the dirt and blood he had collected lying on the roadway. The dirt is gone. 
The water has completely washed away everything bad that was there. He scrutinized himself in the mirror, trying to see everything. Nothing seemed to have changed. He scrutinizes his entire body with his eyes. There are no wounds, no bruises, no abrasions, no fractures. The only one on her left arm shows a small electric spark. It looks like a little sprout. The boy's eyes try to consider this change. It wasn't there before, and it doesn't look dangerous. In an instant, a holographic panel appeared in front of his body. With an interface and many tabs, the condition of his body was indicated. The number of negative points, the lottery, the store. He's a smart guy. He knew it wasn't that simple. Only he couldn't believe he was like in those news stories or fairy tales. He'd become a superhero with some kind of superpower. He clicks the store tab. Pretty unusual. And then the balance points increase. A change occurs. Growth. Why would that be? He sees the balance of his available points. And he sees the price of the starfruit. Then Lu Xu thought it was money. And he remembered the Lord God. And thanked him for his gift. Looking carefully at the holographic menu, he decided that he would rather use all those points to earn money to pay for his little sister's tuition. And groceries for the rest of her life. Now he began to scrutinize the income list. It listed the names of the people Lu Xu interacted with and the number of points received from each. But he didn't realize something right away. What negative points you're making. There was no currency, there was no money. And then he began to analyze. One could be a store owner, the other could be a truck driver. So he decided to check it out. He asked his little sister to make him some noodles, since she should be cooking for herself by now. That's when he got the yelling from behind the door, and again in negative emotion points. Now he understood how it worked. He, looking very carefully at the holographic panel, realized that he was earning those points of negative emotion with his mockery. But he didn't know how to get them out. The balance update came through. He thought he was out. But suddenly he started yelling about money, that he was not given any money. The system is silent. It did not reply to the request to withdraw the collected negative points. It seems that negative emotion points can only be used within this system. Well, then we should also consider the lottery. Now a lottery wheel appeared in front of him. There is a certain fee per spin. And he wanted to take a closer look at the raffle prizes. Maybe there's something very special in there. He paid a hundred points and the wheel started spinning. Lu Xu is already thinking with anticipation about what prizes he will get. And then the system gave him the phrase, thank you for participating. And that really pissed him off. He started pressing the wheel, spinning very, very many times. But every time the system would give him this phrase, maybe he's that unlucky. And the last time he put his hand on the wheel, shouted that he had no credibility. And then suddenly there was another audible notification from the system. He's been given the altering fruit. It is stored in the inventory. Items in the inventory can be taken at any time. Lu Xu gives the command to bring out the item. Expects. A fruit appeared in front of him. Sparkling and glowing, it doesn't look dangerous and it shouldn't kill him. It looked like a neat little red apple or a rather large cream. He brings the fruit to his mouth and is about to taste it. I don't think it's going to hurt him. He's chewing on the fruit, tries to taste it, and then he swallows, waiting for it to take effect. And then a sudden pain came over him. Tears sprang from his eyes. It was as if a fire had started inside him that could not, in principle, be extinguished by anything. The searing pain is gone. Now he's gotten into shape with you probably implied in the changes in the body itself and the meridian changes. He took another very careful look at himself in the mirror from all sides, so as not to miss anything. Maybe negative emotion points are better than money. Little sis is calling Lu Xu for dinner. Dinner's already cold. And then he gets the profit from the negative emotion points in his piggy bank. Lu Xu picks up a coil of hot water which had already cooled down a little as he examined himself from all angles and pours it all over himself in one fell swoop. He didn't see everything this time, of course, because of his pest Xiao Yu. But he'll still have time. I'll put the trough aside. He goes to dry himself with a towel, and he yells to the little one that he's coming. He praises his sister. She did a very good job of cooking. It looks very nice and appetizing. But she immediately grimaced and started to object. Though small but cunning, she realized that she could be forced to make noodles all the time. So she quickly began to praise her brother diligently. He did not pay attention to her conversations, said that next time she would cook too. And then he got points of negative emotions again. They both looked out the window. How the snow was falling. Thanks to this little girl, Lu Xu has made a profit in points, but he can't continue to bully her. Looking at the snow reminded him of the accident. Good thing he'd survived it. He's still in one piece. The main thing was that those horrible memories wouldn't bother him. Lu Xu suggested to Chow Yu after the noodle dinner that the two of them go outside on the occasion of snowfall to mold a snowman. But then she abruptly remembered his promise. 
She asked him for two sticks of Tungalu tomorrow at the festival. Well, then don't let her ask me if her snowman's pretty anymore. After all her hard work, she acted offended. You can't say her handmade snowman is ugly. The snowflakes kept flying and the snowfall kept getting heavier and heavier. The whole ground was covered with snow. It was easy to make a snowman. And here are the snowmen ready, one tall and one short. The tall one is a little sad and the short one is a little lost. Xiao Yu very aptly pointed out that these snowmen resembled her and her brother. Very much. Lu Xu looked at them and realized that little sister was right. They really looked like two drops of water like them. And then the big brother starts asking his little sister, why doesn't she ever tell him her goals in life? She won't always be a child and she will grow up quickly. Xiao Yu smiled and said that she wanted to learn how to make Tangulu. In principle, it was very good. Lu Xu decided to tease the little girl and told her what a blessing it was that it wasn't in her goals to become a sculptor or an artist. And once again, she got extra negative emotion points. She got mad at her older brother and started chasing him around in an attempt to kick him. Large tongues of flame appeared from their house. Something fiery, leaving a large glowing trail behind it in the sky. It looked like a falling meteorite, or remotely resembled the silhouette of the phoenix bird. She flew headlong into the roof of the house, making a terrible whistling sound. It's going to crash and there's going to be a fire. At the last moment, an unknown man appeared, with a mysterious red symbol on his back. With a single movement of his hand, he held back the fiery something. He created some kind of invisible, protective barrier. He didn't let that hot lump of fire burn down the house where Lu Xu and Xiao Yu lived. The whistling passed. The stranger stood calmly. Sparks flew in different directions along with the smoke. He was breathing quietly. His breath was visible in the cold, no emotion. Just a humble hero. He watched from the roof of the house as the loving brother and sister ran around snowmen after each other and goofed around. He could hear little Xiao Yu screaming who wanted Big Brother to stop and not run away. The stranger, noticing something amiss, shifted the focus of his attention to another thing. And at the same moment, he was quickly removed from the roof of the house. It was like he was blown away by the wind. There's a faint trace of him, which is about to disappear. The snowfall has lessened. The main snow wave has passed. Most of the snow is already on the ground. There's a message on Lu Xu's cell phone. It's a distinctive melody. It's unmistakable. He picked up his phone to see who was texting him. Maybe something interesting had come in. And then the little pest of a sister came in, complaining to her brother about life, like he doesn't care about his little sister. Xiao Yu reaches for his phone, wants to see what he's doing there, or wondering after all. Maybe he's playing the message game in a bottle. It's pretty popular right now. Someone complaining about not being able to sleep, looking for funny videos or other content. They sent him something he didn't expect. It surprised him very much, because that's not what he expected. He sent questions to his random interlocutor and expected a coherent answer. Lu Xu rejoices like an angry black monster. He gets new negative emotion points again and laughs like a madman. Xiao Yu doesn't understand what's so funny. Although she doesn't understand when she's young. When she grows up, she'll understand. But she's worried about her brother. She worries about him getting sick in the cold. He has very strange behavior. Lu Xu told me to immediately go to my room and sleep. Otherwise, they won't go anywhere and there will be no festival. He profited again from the negative points. The little sister was very much hurt by his words. He's starting to act like a true predator, cold and calculating. A couple more messages to get negative points, and he can play another lottery. The lottery wheel begins to spin. He awaits the result with anticipation. The wheel is starting to slow down, and the moment of truth is about to arrive. He's about to win the big prize. Another disappointment? A message pops up. Thank you for your participation, Lu Xu. The soul is just angry out of his mind six times this message is written. Doesn't even want the system to write a full sentence just because he's supposedly a loser. Once again, he spends points to spin the wheel. It keeps spinning and spinning. The waiting time seems endless to him. Finally, the wheel has stopped. Once again, the moment of truth for the gambler. With a lottery like this, you could become a gambler. Lu Xu receives a glowing gold piece of paper. He looks at it carefully. He doesn't really know what it is yet. There is a conspiracy or some kind of incantation written on the golden paper in the form of a quatrain. Lu Xu looks at this piece of paper and can't understand anything. But he doesn't come up with anything. Asks the system to explain it to him. He's starting to look closely. Maybe there are instructions on this leaflet on how to use these magic verses correctly. I read the spell without reading it aloud. It spoke of a star that should shine brightly in the heavens. I wonder if there could be something else instead of little stars. Lu Xu thought for a moment. Suddenly he exhales. His breath becomes peculiar and cool, and his left palm begins to glow in a special way. There's a fire. 
that warms but doesn't burn. Twinkle, 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 star. Going beyond the boundaries of mortal worlds, shining brightly like diamonds at night, flames begin to build from his palm. When the sun sets, when nothing shines, the galaxy comes alive. A bright flash appears above Lu Xu's head, and then the Big Bang. Just like in astronomy, the Big Bang Theory, everything blows up into little pieces. He started looking at what he had. It looked like the night sky with all kinds of constellations, and immediately a bright glow appears in his chest. It was as if he had a bright sun in the center of his heart, and stars and constellations all over his body, and became so free and easy, serene. All the problems that had been left somewhere out there, now there's just this moment. All the fallen stars created the galaxy in Lu Xu's body. Seven galaxies. Power overwhelms him. He felt a power that had never been available to him before. It was marvelous. He looks at his hand and sees a glow of bright blue color. It sparks and ripples throughout his body. Starlight can amplify its power. He got this. A very unexpected gift. He stands now, digesting the thought inside him. An awkward silence persists. He's gathering his thoughts and wonders what he should do next with all this. He starts calling for his little pest sister. If she's asleep, the answer is that she's asleep. She didn't see something fall from the ceiling, but she heard her brother singing the twinkle of a starburst. He calmed her down and told her to go to bed and not to forget that tomorrow and get up early. She got angry. Lu Xu had a good idea. His little sister can hear everything. Next time he should hide somewhere so she won't laugh at him later. It's all very Star Atlas-like. And those stars must be some legendary tech. It has almost stopped snowing. Only the month shines in the winter sky, illuminating the snow-covered ground with its light. An integral attribute of the Chinese holiday festival. Paper lanterns swaying. A lot of people gathered for this event. Lots of things colorful, fun, unusual. The vendors sell their treats to all comers. There are plenty of customers. There's an endless line of customers. There's so much today. All kinds of delicious sweet treats. Fruit on a stick in a sweet glaze. Xiao Yu says that Lu Xu sang a song about a little star yesterday very beautifully, and he can eat two bites of the treat. Then Lu Xu was very happy to see the actors. He didn't want to answer his sister's question about her song. Clever little thing. Noticing that he quickly changed the subject of the conversation is very obvious. Lu Xu was not confused and replied to her to eat some more at least to keep quiet. He's standing behind the whole crowd of amazed people, who, with their mouths hanging open, are watching the performance. There is a whistling sound and bright flames in the air. It's mesmerizing. It's dangerous, but it still beckons. Lu Xu doesn't often see such a sight and watches mesmerized without taking his eyes away. The fire show was really good. Xiao Yu started complaining that she couldn't see anything. She's too small. She needs to go up somewhere. A young boy with red hair holds flames in the palm of his hand. Everyone thinks he's a magician. And over and over again, he throws those tongues high up. Everybody's just cheering and screaming for more. Yeah. Lu Xu was beginning to get alarmed by this. He looked at the height of the flames and realized that something was wrong. He got a strange feeling in his chest. It was as if a surge of electricity went through his whole body. And then a thought struck him. Looking at this magician, he wondered. It could very well be. That guy with the red hair, he's also an awakened man. He also has the same power as Lu Xu. But then his musings were interrupted again by his little sister. She tugged at him again. But she couldn't look at everything with her own eyes. It's over, and she still hasn't seen anything. She asks her brother to take her backstage, just to see a little bit. He agrees, takes her hand, and they walk together to the performer's tents. They are close to the marquee, which is a large tent where the performers prepare for their shows. The sound of falling crates along with cans could be heard, like something big falling to the ground, or someone hit something on purpose. A guy with red hair who just five minutes ago was performing on stage stands with his back to these crates that have fallen down. He's looking warily at the uninvited guests. They're taking a step in his direction. This does not bode well for him. They're clearly unfriendly. Two agents in the same uniform and the same glasses. It's like the Secret Service came after this guy. Tongues of flame flying in different directions along with sparks, as if from some devil's cauldron. The red-headed guy's throwing fireballs left and right, trying to hit his opponents, but they're very nimble and agile and very good at jumping. Before the flames can reach their target, they're gone. He desperately throws fire charge after fire charge at them, but they easily move out of his line of attack and dodges the fire. Fireball hit one of the crates, and it just blew it to smithereens. Splinters all over the tent. The special agent went around the redhead from the back with his weapon. He didn't expect the enemy to get behind him. There was a gunshot. The redheaded guy was electrocuted, 
He blacked out. That was a special bullet. The agent takes a close look at the target and assesses the level of danger posed by it. He's cold and completely unemotional. Red Guy is lying with a small burn on his neck, but he's not killed, he's just paralyzed. He's unconscious. She instructs the other agent not to touch him. It's not like he's a threat. He's been neutralized. Xiao Yu, who entered the tent with her brother, started squeaking. Why are they catching that red-headed guy? The agents didn't expect unauthorized civilians to be here. Their activities are not wanted to be seen by others. The older brother realized what was going on here, and he very quickly shut his little sister up, so that she wouldn't say too much. The agent responded to the two children, that it was the artist who violated fire safety rules he did not get a permit for the fire performance. Lu Xu agreed with the agents and said that safety was paramount, and thanked them for the work they had done. Although the guy realized it was all a hoax, he quickly takes his sister by the scruff of the neck and they leave the tent. Lu Xu apologizes to them for disturbing them and says goodbye. The special agents look at the two children with suspicion and remain silent. One asks the other, maybe there is some problem with them. The other replies that he does not see or feel any energy flow. They receive an order over the intercom to bring back the red-haired guy who is lying unconscious as soon as possible. A clear night sky, with bright little stars twinkling. There are countless of them. Sometimes, covering them, the night clouds float by. The festival is over and people have dispersed, so the older brother and his little sister head home. Lu Xu has a lot of suspicions. Who the men in black are if they're after the awakened. He's lucky he didn't get caught. He'll have to be much more careful. Xiao Yu calmly tell his big brother that the other people are different from them right now. He confirms what his sister said, that there are many people in the world who are stronger than they are. But he doesn't know what to do about it. Simple childish logic. The conclusion is simple and ingenious. So Xiao Yu and Lu Xu should become even stronger. Yeah, little sister's right. She's smart beyond her years, and that makes her big brother very happy. A beautiful festive fireworks display appears in the sky. Like a beautiful ending to a festive festival, the brother and sister stand alone and watch him, enjoying the spectacle. After all, it's not often they can afford it. There's a guy standing around the corner looking at the brother and sister. He's on his cell phone. He reports that the security services have released a witness. Xiao Yu reassures her brother. She tells him not to worry because she can protect him in the future. That's really nice. Lu Xu was called from behind by someone. He quickly turned around to see the person. There stood a young guy with silver hair wearing a neat suit. He introduced himself as Ji Wei and said that he was very pleased to meet him. Lu Xu interrupted him abruptly and asked Ji Wei how much he was excited to meet him. This question threw Ji Wei into a bit of a stupor. He didn't expect it and didn't know what to say right off the bat. Lu Xu repeated his question again, how much Ji Wei was happy to meet him. Ji Wei made a silly expression on his face to smooth out the negative situation, but it didn't turn out well. But he thinks it's very nice. But I should have said something. It was a stupid thing to say, though. While he was saying something to them, the brother and sister went on ahead. Ji Wei really didn't like Lu Xu's reaction. I mean, who would have liked to be ignored or not reacting at all? He wants the boys to tell him what happened in the tent. They were the last ones there. You can't get in after that. He had said all sorts of things to get their attention, but they went their own way, as if Ji Wei was nothing. They finally reached their house. The light in the room is on. You can see it through the windows. Lu Xu ponders, this guy must be researching superpowers too. Maybe he's awakened too. There's a reason for all this. Which other people follow these things? Safety is the most important thing. Anonymity is the best defense. So he picks up his cell phone and starts poking around on the internet. He wants to find out more information about the festival online. And then right in front of his eyes, a fresh photo from the holiday appears. No one is hiding or hiding in secret. The teens calmly posted a photo of a red-headed guy creating fire with his hands. Lu Xu clicks on the picture to get a better look. It's so small, I want to see more detail. Looking at the photo from the fire show, the guy deduces that the men in black are all special agents. Been there all along. But if they were there, and they were looking through the awakened crowd, who else might have caught their eye? Someone careless enough to brag about their powers. But the only thing that's clear is that they're after the guy who can play with fire. Xiao Yu started commenting on the class messenger correspondence. Again, his classmates got together without him. He's like an outcast. He is ashamed of his poverty. Lu Xu honestly said that he had no money for such revelry. That's why they didn't invite him. Well, little sis said she was kind and would play with him just for fun. He told Xiao Yu to go to bed immediately. She started to easily manipulate him in a childish way. If he sent her to bed, he would lose his only friend that way. Lu Xu started looking at the correspondence again. 
maybe something else his classmates had posted. The chat room was filled with the usual childish complaints about having to go to school, that they don't feel like learning, and then Lu Xu wrote that none of them are even worthy of a dog, and then the negative emotion points came pouring in, which he's very grateful for. This guy's temper got nasty. Profits from negative emotions. He calculates it, and he looks at a line with one man's last name on it. Can't understand what exactly this man is offended by. It's not like he insulted him. Ji Wei is sneezing really hard. But for some reason, she doesn't cover herself. That's not the proper way to do it. It suddenly got very cold. Why is it like this? Ji Wei looks around and can't understand. Across from him, a grown man sits in the shadows on a bed. The rats are prowling around. But so far, they've been quiet for a few days. Ji Wei shows him a picture from his cell phone and smiles quite a bit while doing so. All because Ni Ting finally shows up and he sees a giant mountain in blue flames, evening in a clear, clear sky with bright stars. It's not so dark yet, and the sun has just barely set over the horizon. A faint light pierces through the windows of the house. With this profit, you can only buy a strange fruit at the store. That's what Lu Xu thought. It had a strange shape, but it had a nice yellow-orange color. Going through the other options, Lu Xu looked at the holographic panel. He had finally made up his mind that he would buy this fruit. Better something than nothing especially since he hadn't tasted it. The fruit shone like a piece of small sunshine. It cast beautiful rays of light in every direction, and it was literally the size of a quarter of a hand. Lu Xu was glad he bought it. As he held it in his hands, he felt some warmth coming from the fruit. It was as if he could feel some kind of energy within it. The warmth did not burn, but warmed his hand pleasantly. He scrutinized it from all sides, holding it with two fingers of his hand. Well, if it's a fruit, the store knows better which means you can eat it because a fruit is something healthy. Oh, I've been there. Now he's going to taste it. On the other hand, you never know. He popped the fruit into his mouth and began to chew it thoroughly. The flavor was peculiar. Suddenly he felt a surge of energy in his chest. It was unbelievable energy flowing through every cell of his body and from just one fruit of this fruit. It was as if the stars in the galaxy had lit up. And he witnessed this event. It really does carry a lot of energy in the force. His eyes were filled with sparkling fire, yet he maintained great calmness. Lu Xu couldn't recall when this had happened to him. The effect was simply unbelievable. He looks at his open palm, feels the energy pulsing. It spreads in waves through his body. One by one, every cell fills up. He feels the power. He throws a punch to test what he can do. Lu Xu had never felt so great before, like he could do anything. There's the wooden table that the guy hit, and there's a sepulchral silence in the air. There is a small smoke coming from the fiery fist, and a peculiar sound is heard, as if something hot was dipped in cold water and quickly cooled down. Oh, he's in a lot of pain. Turns out he overestimated his strength. He got his hand on the spike when it hit him, and now he's cursing really, really hard. It looks ridiculous. Lu Xiaoyu's petty little sister starts scolding him from behind. She came to the noise and wants to know what's going on here. She thought something fell down. Lu Xu pretended to be a silly fool, and said he accidentally hit his head himself. It's no big deal. In response, Lu Xiaoyu told him that he should not only think about himself, but also about her. After all, she was still very young and needed to be taken care of. The little sister asked her brother if she had heard what she heard, and in fact nothing heavy had fallen. Lu Xiaoyu sharply turns her gaze to the window and shouts to her brother to pay attention because someone or something is falling from the sky. Lu Xu looks at her little sister in disbelief because she is a fantasist. He's trying to turn it into a joke. It's late, she can't go outside. It doesn't matter what's going on outside, she can't go outside and watch it. Lu Xiaoyu grabbed Lu Xu by the scruff of his neck and turned his head towards the window and told him to look carefully. She didn't make up anything this time. Elder brother looked displeasedly out the window and said to her, even if all this is true, she still can't. And then opposite the two snowmen on the ground, he saw the body of a man with clothes on, on the snow in the middle of the yard. He was unconscious and dressed in pants and a shirt and his hair was red in color. And then he started shouting in surprise. Lu Xu was stunned. No shit. Someone had really fallen from the sky. All sorts of thoughts were flying through his head. What to do? Maybe call the police or an ambulance or help the poor man himself without waiting for anyone. He took a long look at the body. From every angle. It was a young man with red hair. With nice facial features. And then he realized he'd seen him somewhere before. He knew his face. It was Lian Che. It was getting evening, but still the glow from the sunset hadn't disappeared yet. The sun was over the horizon. That's why it wasn't so dark. 
Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu went to the courtyard and came closer to him. He was lying on his stomach and was not moving. The lighting from the door of the house did a good job of seeing him. Lu Xiaoyu asked her older brother what is their next action. They will be rescuing him. Maybe Lu Xu thought of something else. And then he told his little sister that they should call an ambulance. But I think there's a charge for the call. They just tell the operator at the ER that they don't understand who it is at all. But as soon as he comes to his senses and wakes up, he will pay for the call. The call goes out. Negative emotion profit of 70 points. Lu Xu seemed to have realized what the matter was. He should have guessed as soon as he saw that guy's body. There was no limit to his anger. It was as if electric shocks were rattling around him. It turned out that the man lying by his door had pretended to be unconscious. Lu Xu thought to himself, It looks like this guy lying under his house is one of those superhumans mentioned in the recent news. It seems like he's just lying there pretending to be knocked out and unconscious. That only means one thing. Lu Xiaoyu asked her brother if they would take him by his hands by his legs and carry him into the house. But Lu Xu replied that it was better to take him by his hands on his feet and drag him from the courtyard of the house. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to explain where this body came from. Plus 470 points of negative emotions. Then little sis offered to bring the unconscious guy some water. Lu Xu gave her the advice that it takes too long to draw water. It would be easier to feed this guy snow. Profit from negative emotions, 170 points. Lian Che is in the snow thinking to himself, since when did people stop being naive? Something must have changed drastically. Suddenly he coughs and asks his brother and sister if they can help him. He has quite an expression on his face. Lu Xu starts to press his head back with his hand, pinning his head to the ground so he won't get up. And he says no. Because it's unnecessary trouble and he doesn't need it. He's probably doing a play in front of his little sister and tells Li and Che he can't move. He just won't let him get up from the snow-covered earth. Negative emotion gain 800 points. Li and Chi turned to Lu Xu and asked him to help him stand up for starters. Well, lying on the ground wasn't very comfortable for talking. But Lu Xu pins him down even harder. He says he can't move and needs to rest. Li and Chi sighs heavily and thinks that his opponent is just crazy. With his head smacked off, Lu Xu is counting his negative emotion points in the background. It's great to let them flow to him. The more the better. Definitely. And then the crushed Lian Che is just not so lucky in the forest alone, please, because I turn on starts generating flames in his open palm. He probably got fed up with the circus and decided to deal with Lu Xu. The older brother yells at his sister to run away immediately. Lu Xu felt a terrible heat from Lian Che's palms. He realized that this was no joke. Lian Che smiling slyly mentally reassures himself before he strikes. After all, it was essentially his opponent's fault. He shouldn't have pressed him to the cold ground. But then... A simple snowball hits his palm with fire, but very well, and the flame is extinguished. It's a twist no one expected. They both sit discouraged. Only a small smoke from the red-haired guy's palm develops in the wind. Lu Xiaoyu was a perky little girl. She didn't leave her brother in trouble. She was brave enough to protect him. Let her brother go immediately, she demanded. Lian Che was properly angry. He rekindled the flame in his palm again. Now hold on, he's going to roast everyone. But then Lu Xu starts generating his cold energy. A drop in temperature. Shivers run down to the bone. He takes the red-headed boy's hand and puts out the flame in his palm again. This is child's play. Light it and put it out. They maintain the awkward silence again and look at each other. Nothing happens from the outside as if they were just holding hands. Lu Xu smiles awkwardly and counts a large number of negative points as profit. He asks his red-haired opponent if he is done with these games. Awkwardly looking red boy Li and Chi asked with pleading and condescension to Lu Xu to let him go soon, please. Two snowmen stood outside the house, leaning one on top of the other. It was getting really dark. The glow in the sky was gone. Lu Xu waves to the red-haired guy and smiles, and invites him to come play with them again. Lu Xiaoyu looks at him angrily. Li and Chi, running away from them, realize that the family that makes snowmen has truly kind people. I was very wrong. Running out the front gate of the courtyard... Without turning around, his heels were glistening. Suddenly there was a whistling sound. It was a strange sound, never heard here before. Lu Xu paid attention to this and looked at the right side with the edge of his eyes. His gaze was calm. He was just looking for the source of the sound. The first thing that caught his eye was the black clothes and white sweater. They fit very well, like they were molded. Or at least the tailor had done an excellent job. He saw two people, a guy with bald hair and a girl with blonde hair. They were the ones running on the roof and making whistling noises. Lu Xu knew that the red-haired guy had run away from them. 
but he didn't know who those people were. But he didn't see a single wound on Lian Che's body. Why was he so weak and that fire in the center of the city was his doing? Maybe he overexerted himself. Lu Xiaoyu told her brother not to go near such superhumans anymore. If it wasn't for her, he would have been burned. Lu Xu stroked his little sister's head and reassured her. She shouldn't worry about it. He had told her the secret. After all, he is also an awakened one. Lu Xiaoyu looked at her brother in disbelief and asked him if he was joking. Well, if it's true, let him make some lights for her. The older brother said he would be going to bed already, because he had to sell his eggs tomorrow. Good night wished his little sister. She never waited for her lights. A beautiful month of bright stars, clear skies, and clouds surrounding it. The night is calm, quiet, and serene. Wu Lushu received an incoming phone call. He took it. He was greeted with a hello. The voice seemed familiar. He was told by a man that Lu Xu should hurry up because school would start. He needs to close the store and head to class. To which the young guy replied that he wouldn't be late close to go a couple minutes. He looked at his phone and saw the morning news. The cause of the fire at the shopping center along Sandy Road, as experts say, has been determined. Lu Xu stares thoughtfully at the monitor and doesn't understand who would set fire to a shopping mall and who would want to do that. Good thing no one was hurt and everyone is alive. The cause of the fire, however, turned out to be the disposal of explosive substances that had not been confirmed by a safety protocol. Next, he looks up at the top of the monitor in the table of contents and sees the emblem of the organization foundation. Where did it come from? That's the question. He went to the link and saw a hot news story about how to find out your awakening level in one minute. Awakened people have legitimized their relationships. Lu Xu looks surprised to see here are all the blocked superpower videos on the internet. It turns out that there is even a whole category of awakened people on this site. Level Fs are generally stronger than normal people physically. One person is physically stronger than three people. Level E is more interesting. These people have superpowers. Fire control, electricity control, water control. Level D is apparently something to do with super agility and super speed. Can dodge gunfire. Level C can resist the damage done by firearms. Maybe because the skin covering has organic analogs to armor. Or a protective field is generated by the body. Level B. Here the individual can absorb energy from the environment and energy from the heavens. Level A can harmonize a person with the earth, the heavens. It looks like some kind of semi-divine level. Lu Xu looks carefully at the list of groups. Do they really want to publish all this information about the awakened ones? There's even a video section where anyone can make a publication. It's not too cool. A young guy was approached by a young man. He hesitated a bit and hung back as young people say. He was told that he was looking in the wrong place. Maybe I have something wrong with my eyes because he didn't even blink. One of them, a bald kid, tells Lu Xu that he supposedly sits on the Foundation's website and wants to be like all these awakened people too. But his other friend says it's a waste of time. He mockingly walked up to Lu Xu and said that he would never become awakened and took one egg from the common basket and decided to make an example of him. That the eggs he's selling are not useful to anyone and the people who buy those eggs from him are just doing him a favor. And then someone came up to the two of them apologized for interrupting their conversation. A pleasant female voice, beautiful girl with purple hair, stylishly dressed with a pink skirt, accurate facial features, bright yellow eyes. This is Cao Qingqi's first school beauty. She's the one that all the guys were fawning over. Really the best student in the whole class. A goddess, they said. And the girl was really good looking. She walked calmly over to Lu Xu and asked for one egg. She looked at him softly, and she kept her cool and mannered demeanor. Lu Xu gave her one egg and asked for payment. One and a half yuan. The price was a bit high, but he had to live on something, and he also had to take care of his little sister. She placed the two coins on his desk, and he saw with his eyes the translucent blue flame enveloping her hand. The young lad feels as if he's been pierced. He knows what that flame means, what this energy really means. He took a closer look at her and realized that she was awakened. Blue energy pulsed around Chao Qingqi. He looked at the girl suspiciously and wondered. After all, he could see her energy. Would she be able to sense it? That was a really good question. But she didn't show it, and probably couldn't sense or notice anything. And Lu Xu thought it was for the best. The other guys made eye contact as best they could. One of Trinity said hello to her, and greeted her. Liu Li started to follow the girl, but Lu Xu grabbed his arm and stopped him. He took the egg from the counter. He didn't give him the money. Liu Li placed a large bill of money on the table with a clatter of his palm, and told him to keep the change, and quickly ran after the girl, ignoring Lu Xu. On the one hand, it's good. More money. And on the other hand, it really humiliated and hurt Lu Xu a lot.
because he was thrown that money like a dog, like a beggar. He was actually a poor man. It really hurt him. Lu Xu looked at his hand carefully and thought that there were more and more awakened people. Why would that be? There must be a reason. A sparkle skipped across his palm. He knew he had to speed up his training, get more fruit, to maximize the effect. I smiled wickedly to myself. I need to do something sensible and collect as many negative emotions as possible for the day. By calming him down, he's cheering himself up. His classmates needn't be afraid of him. He's not that violent. He walks into the classroom and as usual, he hears a buzz among his classmates. Some of them want to sit in a different seat. Others are worried about the upcoming exams. There was a pretty girl, laughing loudly, and that's how she got Lu Xu's attention. She was sitting at her desk, with two neat pigtails. She had pink hair and expressive burgundy eyes. As the girl passed by, she called out to Lu Xu and asked him if he would like to be awakened, and if he could, what kind of power he would choose. He ironically replied, freedom, equality, justice, fairness, legality. She praised him and said he was really very smart. Now she understood why he studied so well. Negative emotion points plus 76, a nice addition. Liu Li jumped out of the blue. He told the girl to leave him never to be awakened. That's when the teacher came into the classroom. He hoped that the students would be able to pay attention to their studies in the new semester. He wished them good luck with the upcoming exam. Someone poked Lu Xu's left arm with a pen. Not that it hurt, but it was rather unexpected. His roommate across the desk asked him for a copy, and she smiled sweetly and flirtatiously at him. Then the neighbor behind him smiled slyly and asked Lu Xu if he had figured out the tasks. And then the rest of the classmates joined them. They knew Lu Xu was smart, not lazy, and a diligent student. He studied well and always did his homework. He nods nicely and nods his head approvingly, letting them know he's got it all figured out and done. Smiled to himself and thinks great opportunity to earn negative points. He passed the last sections of the tests and checked off the correct answers. And the tests were difficult. He sighed contentedly. He sighed contentedly and felt bliss and a kind of lightness in his whole body. It was as if the tension had eased. And the other lazy, slacker classmates are already thinking of ways to cheat on the balloon. Yeah, Lu Xu's good. He's done it. They're ready to cheat. And then everybody was dumbfounded. They just couldn't understand what was going on. They didn't expect such a thing from their classmate. Lu Xu brazenly shut the answers from his classmates. One should have seen the expression on their faces. Negative points of emotion sprinkled as if from a cornucopia. Just what I needed. The teacher strictly walks between the rows of students and repeats like a mantra you can't cheat. Concentrate better on your answers. Lu Xu's no-guy classmate started to just freak out. How dare someone accuse him of cheating, even though no one was talking about him specifically. Don't take it personally. The guy just broke the desk in two out of anger. Flames were flying all around him. The teacher frightenedly told him that he hadn't said anything bad to him. We need to calm down. Lu Xu looked at Li Qi, his body shrouded in yellow energy. Could it be that he is an awakened one? Li Qi Qi angrily grabbed his teacher by the scruffs and yelled, He is awakened and he will never have to take exams again and he is not afraid of teachers. Suddenly someone pulled up a hand. Someone wanted to draw attention to themselves, or maybe to lighten the mood. Lu Xu told Li Qi that he would be breaking the law if he did that. Li Qi replied that he is 17 years old and they will not put him in jail even if he hits him. Lu Xu heaved a sigh of relief and prepared to combine a lecture demonstrating his knowledge. And then he began to enumerate the list of especially grave crimes and the punishment he would definitely receive if he committed at least one crime. Mocking Li Qi Young, the guy smiled. Lu Xu started counting the negative emotion points, and everyone started to think what a rascal Li Qi was. Li Qi Qi pushed the teacher hard so that he fell to the floor. The teacher looked at him in horror. He didn't expect such a thing from his student. The boy's strong arm went around the school desk. That's not something a normal person could do. The object is heavy, but Li Qi will easily do it. He lifted up in that heavy desk. The flames enveloped his body. The energy was building with a bright yellow color, and he shouted to everyone not to let anyone stand in his way. Lu Xu added, referring to the rules and regulations of the school. After all of this performance is over, Li Qi will be required to make full restitution. A bang was heard in the hallway and a blast wave flew out from the doorway of the classroom where Lu Xu was. The other students fearfully from all the classes began to whisper, stepping out into the hallway. Something must have happened. There seems to be an awakened one. This is unbelievable. A voice was heard ordering the children to return to their classrooms and continue their studies. Otherwise, they would be severely punished. In front of him walked the headmaster with a small height and a mustache, and behind him two quiet guys in identical uniforms. Lu Xu thought about the clothes of the two attendants. 
They were a little strange, but they were the same. It felt like they were people in black. They grabbed Lee Key. I don't know how they did it. He was screaming for them to let him go. Somehow they suppressed his strength. Lee Chi Chi is very surprised. He can't resist them. What's going on? He is unable to understand. The school children saw two men in black leading Lee Key under their arms, who appeared to be awakened. The headmaster and teacher Shu accompanied them. Lu Shu wondered who the men in black were. They were so quick to deal with the awakened one. No one knew where they took Li Qi. There was a sudden rustling sound. It seemed to be random, but only Lu Shu could hear it. Quickly, he reacted to it and turned his head in the direction the rustle was coming from. Chao Ching Chi, the school's first beauty, was standing there. She looked at him and he looked at her. They locked gazes. Chao Ching Chi looked at Lu Shu and remained silent. But she didn't take her eyes off him. This had never happened before. The foremost beauty is looking at him like this. An announcement was heard from the school loudspeaker. Everyone will have to take a blood test. You must stay in your classrooms. Lu Shu didn't like it. It's all of a sudden, and just after the Li Qi incident happened, the guy's tense. There was a reason for the announcement. He had all sorts of bad thoughts in his head. Suddenly, the negative energy inside of him rippled. This was not usually a good thing. It was a bad premonition. The bearer was warned of danger. There was no one near the walls and windows of the classroom. The classroom doors were closed. There was an air of nervousness in the air, everyone sitting at their desks, each in his or her own seat. And they all have one thing on their minds and that's what the school authorities have come up with. A teacher and three assistants in white coats enter the classroom. The teacher says to come to the front when a name is called. Lu Shu is nervous. He ate that special fruit back then. After that his body became stronger and the blood test might give him away. He's well aware that all these assistants in white coats are men in black. There's no doubt about it. Accidents are not accidents. The teacher starts reading out the names. Lu Shu thinks he can skip out and get away quickly. Something inside him tells him that he can't take the blood test. The old tried and tested way among all the schoolboys. A young boy apologized to his teacher and asked to use the bathroom. Allegedly complaining about feeling sick, the teacher gave him the go-ahead. He took his word for it. You can't torture a child. The head assistant looked at Lu Shu suspiciously and said, Kolya... He is in such a hurry, then let him be the first to donate blood. Lu Xu is starting to feel sorry for him. It's like he can't take it. It's really scary. The assistant in charge reassures him and tells him it won't take long, just a couple seconds. The sharp syringe needle is already shining and ready. The guy thinks maybe he should faint for good measure. Yeah, that could really help create a distraction. And then Lu Xu's classmate, the girl next to her, got really sick at the sight of the syringe. And she said she was having a panic attack. And in an instant, she passed out. She fell on the desk and hit her head on the desk. Lu Shu Sam didn't expect such an outcome. But the assistant deftly grabbed her arm. She was already unconscious, like a boiled fish, and quickly pierced her skin with a sterile syringe needle and drew the right amount of blood. Lu Shu certainly didn't faint from seeing this girl's blood being drawn, but it made him feel uncomfortable. He didn't notice the other assistant approaching him from behind in the blind spot. All he could think about was that this exam was very unusual. The assistant grabbed his arm quickly before Lu Shu could even get out of it. He really didn't want his blood to be analyzed. Injection, blood draw, and the moment of truth. How it wasn't so much painful as just unpleasant. For some reason, Lu Shu feels like he's done for, even though the weather is beautiful. The sun is shining. The trees are growing. Guy's wound was treated quickly and put a band-aid on it. Yeah, he was thinking about getting out of class, but he didn't this time. And then Lu Shu was just stunned. Li Qi had returned. All the other classmates crowded around him. He was smiling like nothing had happened. Just an hour ago, he was ready to tear this classroom apart and burn it down. He was filled with anger and rage. Now he's calm and in a good mood. The teacher gingerly told his student to take his seat, but you could see that he was scared and felt insecure. Li Qi is signaling to Lu Xu, and at the same time, he makes sure that he is not noticed by the people in white coats and masks. He walked over to Lu Xu and thanked him, it was because of him that he had become awakened. Very unusual. Li Qi sits down in his seat and tells him that a special class will be set up in their city to bring together unique students like Li Qi and Lu Shu. Lu Shu didn't believe it and asked Li Qi with disbelief. Li Qi confirmed, a special class will be theirs at the school. With the blood test, it will be clear very soon who will be able to join this class and study there. All the information is already on the internet. Lu Shu picks up his phone and starts checking some kind of special class they want to bring all the awakened ones together. It must be for training purposes. He's reading his classmates' correspondence. Yeah, they confirm that they just had their blood drawn. 
looks like they all have the same story, and already one girl has written that a certain school has announced an enrollment in a special class. Somehow Lu Xu didn't like all this, but he realizes that the government has begun to recognize the awakened. Everyone begins to discuss amongst themselves the prospect of a special class, and only Du Xu sits quietly focused on his feelings. He asks himself one question, that he cares about at the moment. That's all he needs to know. The sun is shining near the chimney of the house. The weather is perfect. Lu Xu knocks on his sister's door, and he does it quietly. And we're excited to share the news with Xiao Yu, and just like that, I'm so proud that he's special. Awakened. But there's no answer. No one opens the door. It's all a bit suspicious. My sister's usually very energetic. He quietly opens the door to her room and calls her name. I don't know if she's there or not. He sees her lying on the bed with a blanket over her, breathing very heavily, sighing. She has a fever and chills. You can tell. Lu Xu asks her little sister Xiao Yu what's wrong with her. Xiao Yu looked really bad. She had a fever and chills. She probably got sick in the evening and didn't sleep much all night. Then she saw a treat in her brother's hands. She asked him if it was a sweet potato fry. Lu Xu interrupted her and said it was not the time to think about it and asked her how she got the fever and fever. She started making excuses. I wanted to wash Lu Xu's things, his clothes, but the water was too cold. He put a thermometer in her mouth and told her not to chew on it. The temperature is 39 degrees. That's a lot for a little girl. That's why she has a fever. Lu Xu thinks we should get some antibiotics. This kind of fever and fever won't go away just like that. But then an unusual idea occurred to him. Maybe the changing fruit can help his little sister Xiao Yu. It won't make things worse. Xiao Yu noticed with the corner of her eye that something was wrong with her older brother. There was something wrong with his older brother. She asked Lu Xu what was wrong, why his face had changed. He wryly told her that he was from the edge where it was very hot. He looks at the holographic panel of the store. I wanted to buy money for Xiao Yu's special fruit, but the store panel is blocked. Must be a malfunctioning version. But after a moment, the system worked. Lu Xu obtained a changing fruit for Xiao Yu. It looks like a small red apple or cream. Lu Xu told his little sister to eat it. She got excited. If something is tasty and cute, why not eat it? She popped it into her mouth and began to chew it thoroughly. She was very curious. Either the fruit quickly melted in her mouth like a caramel, or she swallowed it right away. But she couldn't taste it. She didn't know what it tasted like. Her eyes lit up bright blue. Her face was burning with heat. Droplets of sweat covered her. The temperature didn't go down. Lu Xu, looking at her, thought that the special fruit from the store had worked properly. She pulled out a thermometer and looked at the temperature. Remain silent. She felt a little better and the temperature started to drop a little at a time. Then she suddenly asked her older brother where he got this special fruit from. Where did he get it? Could it be that he's an awakened one? Lu Xu remained silent in response. Maybe he didn't want to deceive his little sister Xiao Yu. She was very smart for her age. He told her straight up that he's not the Lu Xu he used to be, whether he could fully call himself her brother, and then he asked his little sister if she would like to be awakened. Then he rephrased his question, does she want to awaken? Does she also want to have a special gift of special powers? Xiao Yu answered in the affirmative that she wanted to. The girl was boyish fearless. Though small, she was his sister. She had the same blood as him. Lu Xu gave a sigh of relief and promised his sister that he would find a way to make her awakened. But then she asked her big brother in a very childish way what she should do for that. What was the way? To sing some magic song for the starlet. He smiled at her and told her to go to bed. Bright flickers everywhere illuminated the room. Lu Xu has three starfruit in the palm of his hand. They're neat little red ones, and they give off a nice glow. He's slowly starting to eat them one by one, and wonders if the starfruit can power him for half a month or so. Then what can the altering fruit do? It can increase the effectiveness of Lu Xu training by as much as nine days. This means that the return on your efforts will be much greater. Only after eating the changing fruit it will be possible to accelerate his pumping. So to speak, upgrade to your own strength. Lu Xu's body began to draw energy from the surrounding space. He became very excited he could accumulate the constellation even faster. Energy pulsed throughout his body and concentrated in the chest area. Given his current situation, a changing fruit is just what he and his little sister need. Lu Xu realizes he must work on Xiao Yu's condition. He must prepare her for her awakening. He remembered his beautiful classmates and how he used to get negative emotion points. With their help, he will get a fair amount of altering fruit. School classmates all talk to each other as always in the classroom chatter and preparation for the lesson. Lu Xu sat down at his desk. Surprisingly, he wasn't tired at all because he had practiced all night although he hadn't slept. A satisfied classmate told him that the blood test results would be announced 
and who can join the special class, he monotonously repeated to her the words, democracy freedom. Although in her eyes he seemed boring for some reason, she tried to convince him that times had changed. You don't have to study anymore, and it was like he was shielded from her by a translucent screen. Suddenly the door swung open, and the young man focused all his attention on the passage. A gorgeous woman walked in. She wore a red dress, a gray jacket, and had a very stern look. She walked into the classroom and shone like a star. I bet you couldn't take your eyes off her. There's a lot to see. And all the guys said, wow, what a beautiful body. I can't believe this is our new teacher. They'd probably get straight A's from a teacher like that. Lu Xu's classmate neighbor said aloud that this woman was not so good and beautiful. Obviously, she was jealous with wild envy. All girls want the attention of boys. The elderly teacher introduced the guest. The city authorities decided to create a special Daoyang class in the school in order to gather the most gifted students and continue their special training. The teacher pointed to the stern woman and introduced her. She will be the leader of this special Daoyang class. Next, he asks all those whose names he is about to call to stand up and meet their new teacher. The teacher said the first name in a reserved tone, Liu Li. This news made Lu Xu extremely happy. He smiles sincerely. Next, the names of Ling Qing Yu and Yang Ling Qi are read out. The students stand up and throw their hands up in victory. And then he says Lu Xu's name. At this time, he just sits there pensively and doesn't react to anyone. All the classmates turned around with surprise and great envy. How could he have any superpowers? And the teacher confirmed and repeated his name and told Lu Xu to get up from his desk. We have to greet the new leader. He apologized to his teacher. He just wanted to let his classmates know that they had heard correctly. That's when he's collecting negative points and the ones that aren't are pouring down on him like a rain of abundance. Then he thanks them all on behalf of his little sister, Xiao Yu. Next, the stern female Daoyang class leader introduces herself by the name of Shifei. She continues, All those whose names have been called must attend the culture class, and be sure to report back at 7 o'clock in the evening. After that, the teacher and Zifei leaves the classroom together, walking out the door. A little dumbfounded by such news, students are not yet taking out lucky or unlucky by the way special. From the start, the workload has already been increased. Everyone started yelling at Lu Xu that they were jealous of him because Dao Yan's class has such a handsome teacher. Lu Xu's sly classmate congratulated him for joining the special class. He whispered to her in confidence, Maybe she wants to know what the secret is and how he did it. She bloomed like a flower in an instant and started talking with sincere eyes that she knew Lu Xu wouldn't leave her here alone. And he mockingly mouthed it to her so that she would repeat after him, the power of the power of the power comes Shalom Shalom Fairy Shazam. And then he made a big mockery of himself. A classmate just took off like a scary Mahara. She thought he was going to tell her a secret. He wasn't going to talk trash. And he certainly wasn't going to make fun of her. Lu Xu ignored her tantrums. He took out his cell phone and started to look at the messenger messages. And to all my classmates and classmates sent out a very friendly kind message. A keepsake. Everything was just starting to spew venom because of their envy and anger and he was taking genuine pleasure in it, counting the negative points he collected from them, mentally thanking them, thank you friends. It was with their help that Xiao Yu would be able to awaken. The teacher also added that because of the formation of the Dao Yang class, exchange students came to the school. We need to transplant them to their new seats and welcome the newcomers. An unknown girl walked into the classroom leisurely and quietly. All the boys in the class just went wild because she was a foreigner and she wasn't as beautiful as the local girls. She was dressed as a boy, but she had fabulously beautiful blue eyes and a very innocent look. The new student looked very carefully in Lu Xu's direction as soon as she entered the classroom. She was looking at him. Either she noticed he was awakened or she liked him as a guy. Her looking at him made him uncomfortable. He felt uncomfortable. A girl like that is still a foreigner and she's not taking her eyes off him. She walked close to Lu Xu's desk and pointed next to the girl sitting next to her, Ye Lin, and asked the teacher to take her seat. Lu Xu found this voice very familiar and pleasant, but both he and Ye Ling were certainly discouraged by such insolence. Ye Ling really didn't like it. Some cheeky girl. Comes into the classroom, five minutes later he throws her out of her seat. She tried to say something, but the teacher interrupted her and said that the new student was free to take Ye Ling's place. The new girl smiled very sweetly and innocently and thanked Ye Ling. She's such a cute little thing to look at. Ye Ling was as red as a beet with anger. She huffed and puffed, then waved her hand. Then she defiantly stood up without turning around and staggered to a new spot and shouted to Lu Xu. The new girl sat in her seat and asked the new roommate if he was okay. Lu Xu made a silly face and asked her again. He didn't even expect her to talk to him first. 
He thought to himself that maybe he'd done something stupid, accidentally blurted it out. It had completely slipped his mind that a new child was an unusual person. Next, the new girl coughed and introduced herself. Her name is Jiang Shu Yi, and she's actually a guy. That's a twist. Everybody's freaking out, obviously everyone's normal, traditional orientation. But this guy looked so cute. Lu Xu examined Jiang Shu Yi very carefully, slowly taking note of all the details. First, he looked at the fact that he had an Adam's apple on his throat. Adam's apple. The first sign that this is a man. Then I looked at the rib cage. There are no female breasts, or they're very, very small. And then Lu Xu started counting the negative points from Zhang Shu Yi. He probably noticed that he was being looked at to determine his gender. Lu Xu looked at Zhang Shu Yi. The latter smiled tactfully in return. Therefore, Lu Xu thought that his new neighbor liked his appearance. Evening, overcast sky. The lights are still on in some classrooms of the school. This is a special class. There are pillows on the tiled floor. No one really knows what they're for yet but they correspond to the number of students. Lu Xu looks at it with a question. What are the pillows doing here? Most likely in a special classroom, all the students will be taught Tao techniques. Zifei turned to the students and said that she would give each of them a special document. They should read it carefully and sign it. It is written on the document that one must not divulge everything that happens in the Dao Yang class. Violation is punishable by law. Lu Xu is a smart guy and he understood right away. The Dao Yang class will be controlled by paramilitary forces. Awakened children are weapons and will be used by the government. Zifei asked the new students who thought what the Daoyang class was formed for. She wanted to know everyone's opinion. Someone raised their hand and said that to master the Dao techniques. Zifei stopped stalling and got to the point. She asked if anyone understood why they had chosen the students who were present in this class. Everyone was sitting on prearranged cushions. This question from the new head of the class shocked everyone. Everyone was silent. No one knew what to say. Zifei asked again. Had any of the disciples heard anything from them about the new alloy? She that we should start with the basics and pointed her finger at Lu Xu and asked him if he knew sodium and what it was. Lu Xu stood up and began to think what answer to give to the new class leader Dao Yang. He wasn't sure what he was mumbling and stammering. Well, maybe it was stress. Maybe it was shyness. And then he spouted some nonsense. That sodium is the magical heavenly path, which immediately earned Zifei negative emotion points. Zifei smiled indulgently and told him to sit down. Sodium is a chemical element in the Mendeleev table. It was discovered by chance that sodium has other uses to measure the blood's response to potential. She then shows a picture of a chemical reaction of how blood interacts with this metal. Normally sodium is silver in color, but as soon as the blood of an awakened person enters the sodium-potassium alloy, the alloy changes its color to black. The stronger the potential, the darker the color. Zifei continued that they categorized potential into six levels, but as they say, Potential and talent are not everything. You need high willpower and self-discipline. She warned the students present. She warned the students in attendance that if someone was having a hard time or was having a hard time, they could always leave. Lu Xu looked at Zifei, and she says that in the network, the training that the Dao Yang class does is much more important than all the students have been trained from the beginning. Zifei is holding a list. It only lists the level of ability of those in the class, and she starts listing. Level A, there are none. Level B, Liu Li. That one began to smile and wondered. Level F, Lu Xu. Silently, he didn't say anything, probably waiting for the others to react. His roommate, Liu Li, was shyly looking at Lu Xu. He probably wanted to be friends with him, but he was shy. Lu Xu didn't care about that right now. He was analyzing. He hadn't yet eaten the altering fruit before they took his blood, so they can't judge his final potential. Maybe it's a good thing the men in black will be less likely to follow him. Liu Li asked Qi Fei, are there any A-level students in the school? She replied that there was only one. It's Cao Qingqi. This is certainly a surprise and a cool twist. Lu Xu tensed up. He had heard the name and remembered this girl who had bought an egg from him. It was then that he noticed the energy around her hand. Cao Qingqi is the first school beauty. She's the best looking girl in the school. But she also has the highest superpower potential in the entire school. Night. Clear sky and Lu Xu and his little sister's house lights are on in the windows. A bicycle is parked next to the house. Lu Xu is doing the math. He can only buy five altering fruits from the virtual store. He looks at the holographic panel of the store, and he is very dissatisfied. He's angry that he can buy so little with his glasses, some kind of unfair system. One fruit he put aside for his sister Yao Yu. He picked the best and prettiest one. Suddenly, system bugs and glitches occurred. The holographic panel of the store started blinking and hissing. After the glitch ended, the system gave the following information. 
the altering fruit has reached its highest utilization limit. It will be in the store's storage from now on. Lu Xu found a loophole. He can use his negative emotion points to buy an unlimited amount of fruit. Well, if this fruit can be stored for a long time, he will be able to sell it and therefore get rich very much. The question remains, and the most important question of all, how long this fruit will last and how much potential it will raise. We need to experiment more with that plan. He looks at the clock on the wall. It's 10 o'clock at night. He goes to the door of his sister's room and gently knocks on it. He knows what a glutton she is. He's got a surprise for her. Lu Xu looks at the fruit carefully. A certain amount of time has passed since it was taken out of the store, and the useful properties of the fruit had started to weaken. He catches himself thinking again. If it's going bad so fast, then you can't get rich off it. Bummer. He opens the door of Xiao Yu's room and tells her to come out, and shows her this fruit he prepared for her. She just pounces on it, grabbing that fruit and biting right off her older brother's hand. It's a horror. She left her little teeth marks on his arm and she's living in peace. Little biter. And then on her own, little sis slams the door in her big brother's face. What it was, Lu Xu didn't realize. He remains silent. But this rudeness can't be tolerated. She didn't even say thank you. And then she bit me in the face to say goodbye. He starts pounding on the door with his fist. He hits it really hard. That kind of bad behavior can't be tolerated. And then Xiao Yu bursts out like a little Mahara. She starts yelling at Lu Xu's older brother and making her claims. The negative emotion points go into the piggy bank. Lu Xu's soul quickly oriented himself and smilingly showed his little sister two handfuls in different hands with the rest of the fruits. Allegedly, he had specially prepared them for her. She starts to eat with a disgruntled look and scolds him. Why couldn't he give her everything at once? She likes to eat everything so much. Lu Xu looks at his little sister and says to herself that after this fruit, his little sister Lu Xiaoyu will become even more talented and stronger. Although right now she doesn't know much about what's going on by eating them. It wasn't until she'd had time to liquefy and swallow it all. I wondered what she ate, what her big brother gave her. Lu Xu answered her, that it was still a secret, but it was special to her they would help improve her potential. She wanted to be awakened. Thinking to herself, the little girl realized this thing wasn't cheap. She told her older brother that he shouldn't bother. Lu Xu smiles and tells her that he didn't get sick after eating the same thing, so there's no need to worry. He stroked her head. She looked back at him with her blue eyes. Lu Xu told her to carry the book he would check her homework. She has to keep up with the pace of learning and develop her critical thinking. Whether she's awakened or not, negative points sprinkled into his piggy bank. She ran into her room and slammed the door behind her with a bang and shouted that she was tired and wanted to sleep. Lu Xu replied that even if she didn't dream of avoiding it, he would still find a way to earn money and send her to school as early as possible. Then he calmed down, and he realized that she's a girl after all, and she has her own emotions and she has her own reactions. Lu Xu opened the holographic panel and started making calculations. First he had a potential level of F, and now the altering fruit had reached its utilization limit. He looks longingly at the panel, and there are five stars lit up. That means the limit has indeed been reached. You can't go any higher in your head. Zifei gave answers to questions regarding the foundation. Does it really publish truthful information? She was responding to the students of the Taoyang class. That the system of categorizing the awakened is universal. If an awakened person is born with a rank of A, he must advance through the levels over and over again. She goes on to describe only the level of physical strength. Although flexibility and speed are not mentioned, and depending on the progression from rank to rank, the possibilities are impressive. Lu Xu pondered for a moment. The example of physical strength was very interesting, and he imagined standing himself on a mountain with corpses and handing out punches left and right. Checking his biceps is a game. Maybe he's already reached not only rank E but also rank D. It's good to be able to find out the real level. After missing the altering fruit in lottery stores, there may be new plushies. Maybe they are even better than the fruit. The lottery starts spinning, and Lu Xu really hopes he doesn't get a simple thank you for participating. The rotation has stopped. The arrow pointed. The bell rang. Moment of truth for a young guy. Maybe he won something interesting. Who knows? Somewhere something goes missing, somewhere something stays. A piece of something brown and obscure appeared as neat little bricks, and it fell at his feet. It was the size of his palm. It wasn't small, but it wasn't very big. It was a surprise to him. He didn't even realize what it was. It gave off some kind of strange odor. Lu Xu got down on one knee and touched it with his finger. It felt soft and a little shiny. Now it's on his finger and he feels it slippery too. He puts his finger in his mouth and starts tasting what it is. It immediately occurs to him that it's good tofu, and then he gets hysterical. 
points spent on the lottery, he didn't get anything worthwhile. And in return, the system gave him some garbage. Actually, it's just good tofu. Lu Shu is screaming like crazy. He was expecting something very good and rare, and they gave him stinky tofu for his glasses. Negative emotion points appear in the piggy bank from Xiao Yu's little sister. She went into her brother's room and it stinks. And she covered her face, mouth, and nose because that smell would make you puke. She asked Lu Shu if someone beat him up properly, and he said she was wrong and the problem was something else. She looks at the tofu box, and covering her mouth, first she says the tofu stinks. Then she sniffs and concludes that it's fine. The two of them take sticks and start chewing tofu. If it smells normal, it should taste normal. They don't stay silent and eat tofu with their eyes closed. They're probably trying to see if the product is spoiled. And then little Xiao Yu starts saying it's too good for tofu. And it's very unusual. Lu Shu remains calm and silent. He's nervous enough as it is. Who would love to get some lame points instead of wasted points? He starts yelling. It's just plain tofu. And little sister's eating bite after bite. It's probably her waking power turned into food. Then she asks her older brother, then she wants the fruit from the pancakes. Lu Shu stands with an empty box where there was just tofu and tells Xiao Yu that he is not a restaurant. He presses the holographic panel in fury. Yes, he's hungry now, but he can't give up. We have to keep going. The outcome of him hitting the prank panel is he squeezed it like a madman. The whole room is now littered with tofu boxes, and they're spreading their aroma all over the place. It's now the system that gives him the stinky tofu. In lieu of thanks, thank you for your participation. Xiao Yu rejoices and chews. This stinky tofu tastes good to him. She said it's as tasty as they sell it outside. Lu Shu looks at the pile of boxes and doesn't understand why the road to awakening is so hard. He looks at all that stinking pile and wonders what to do with it. It's too much. And then he had a good idea to sell all this stuff. Why not? I mean, he's got it for nothing now. Lu Shu thanked his little sister for the idea. After all, she was the one who planted it. Good girl. A clear sunny day. Green grass, green leaves, birds singing, clear skies and white clouds. The smell of tofu is spreading everywhere. Negative emotion points are slowly accumulating in Lu Shu's piggy bank. He stands behind his counter. He's opening a box of tofu, and it stinks to death. And everybody's scared of the smell, both the vendors and the potential customers. At the next counter, his colleague asks a question. Is everything okay with his little sister? But Lu Shu can't understand what Uncle Wang means. He makes a fool of himself and says even though the tofu he made stinks, but it tastes great. It's delicious in its own right. The old man starts to eat and courteously hints to the young guy that the product is not the first freshness and asks for the date of manufacture. And then he changes his mind abruptly once a piece of tofu is in his mouth. And here he is already getting bliss and pleasure. Tofu is really good. The pungent odor is gone immediately. The flavor is delicate with the right sauce. He begins to praise Lu Shu that the work he has done is very good. This product will be in demand. Lu Shu thinks he'll sell that stinky tofu. And Uncle Wang can safely continue selling tea eggs. More than a year ago, old man Wang removed the tea eggs from sale on purpose for the sake of Lu Shu. And it wasn't good for his business. Old Wang waved his hand and told the boy that when he looked at him for the first time, he remembered himself as a young man. He was the same. It's not easy for Lu Shu now. And old people need to take care of young people. Young people are the future. It's enough that Lu Shu is grateful. Lu Shu looked at old man Wang with a satisfied and proud look. He was indeed very grateful to him. And then the trade began. He began to chant and promote his merchandise behind the counter. So people wouldn't be afraid to buy. The sun's rays reflect merrily in the window panes of the school and warm the classrooms for the students. Lu Shu is very satisfied. He's selling stinky tofu. He's not only making a lot of negative feelings, he's making money. That's great. Now sitting in class at school, he's in a great mood. It's just a total defense of positivity. At the front of the school desks, the classmates are starting to whisper. Gossip has started about Lu Shu's level of potential. Jiang Shu Yi hears these gossip too and reassures Lu Shu. There's no need to worry. The teacher said that if you persevere, the training will definitely be successful. Suspiciously, Lu Shu thinks to himself that he's supposedly being consoled. Why would he do that? Nothing happens for nothing. Jiang Shu Yi looks at his neighbor with an innocent look. Maybe he said something wrong. Lu Shu abruptly blew up and blurted out anyway. But Jiang Shu Yi looks like a girl in his eyes. He probably already had someone write a love message to him on a piece of paper. Then he came to his senses a little, felt awkward and corrected himself. He doesn't mean the guys, but the girls in the class. And then he felt a look of ill intent and an intake of negative points from his neighbor Ye Ling behind him. 
he must have done something wrong. And there was some awkward misunderstanding. He probably said the wrong thing. Ye Ling sat there pouting in frustration and resentment. She looked at Zhang Shu Yi, who turned out to be a guy. The classroom doors opened loudly, and Zi Fei walked in quickly and confidently, clacking her heels on the floor. She always acted like a domineering mistress. There was something dominant about her. Maybe that's why the boys in class liked her so much as an adult aunt. Zi Fei loudly called out the name of the schoolboy Li Ching Yu. He was a little confused. She asked him to get up from his desk in an orderly tone. She looked very angry and displeased. Lu Xu himself couldn't understand what was going on. Li Ching Yu must have done something wrong to get such attention. Li Ching Yu stood there and excused himself as best he could. Li Ching Yue was delayed. He wasn't in the classroom. Lu Xu wondered how it happened. In the middle of class, a student was taken away. Li Ching Yu's head started to appear in the school doors. All the classmates started talking about seeing him and his return. He walked through the door, very upset, not himself. Usually he smiled, but now he wasn't. He scratched the back of his head and walked past his friends, and everyone realized that where he had been called to was no good. Maybe someone heard some rumors. Who did you expel in second grade for violating the privacy rule? Lu Xu looked at his classmate carefully, and one of the classmates started saying that some people had awakened from the class, but at the exact moment they were expelled. It's a weird coincidence. They ended up being taken by a special group of men in black, and no one knows where or why. Lu Xu is questioning himself. Turns out the men in black are like an invisible control. They have this tradition of suddenly taking people away. Something very interesting but nasty and sneaky came to Lu Xu's mind. He smiled and looked ahead of him like a poisonous snake. He walked up from behind Li Ching Yu and began to rebuke him in public for his long tongue. That he allegedly revealed the potential of every student in Dao Yang's class. Now he will definitely be expelled for this. Li Ching Yue was simply taken aback by such accusations. He was already having a hard time. And then there was Lu Xu with his accusations. And then he abruptly began to laugh. His laugh was very angry. He began to laugh like the devil. Without regret or mercy. I repeat, if you tell everything, you're bound to get kicked out. He was emotionally destroying his victim. Li Ching Yue clutched his head and denied everything. Realizing the horror that could happen to him or had already happened, Li Ching Yu started crying like a little girl and ran out of the classroom shouting that none of this was true and Lu Xu added oil to the fire and shouted at him to keep his mouth shut. He ran out so fast and swift in tears and snot, and he slammed the doors behind him, that all the other students in the class were dumbfounded. It was unexpected. Lu Xu exhaled. He realized that the taunt was successful, so he had really ratted everyone out. It was true. The classmates really didn't like it when Lu Xu started bullying Li Qingyu, and it was undeserved. Lu Xu is not paying attention. He's walking towards his goal. He needs a lot of negative emotion points and his classmates and all the people around him are just the source. Raw material. Sunset. The day at school has come to an end. All the main classes are over, and the students have gone home. The setting sun over the city is unbelievably beautiful. A simple phenomenon, but so extraordinary. Tao Young class has started. Zifei put the book on the table and said that it was for beginners. Each of the students should study it thoroughly. She stood in front of the students, and they sat on cushions in front of her, lined up and staggered. Then she glanced towards Lu Xu. There was something mysterious in her gaze, and everyone knew by looking at Zi Fei that she was looking exactly in Lu Xu's direction. Maybe he did something wrong again, stepping closer to him so as not to call his name or point a finger at him. She asked him. She repeated the question regarding the element sodium. She had asked it last time, but Lu Xu acted like a fool and answered again with some gibberish. A small addition of negative emotions to the piggy bank, Lu Xu wondered to himself why there was so little. Zi Fei looked at Lu Xu with anger, but then she calmly replied that she would tell her own story. Lu Xu thought that she was scared of the same stupid situation that was so she didn't even try to ask him anything. Most likely. Reiki medicine was revived 17 months ago. More and more awakened every day. The world is a very different place now than it was before. Sodium potassium alloy is the main indicator. It became possible to unlock many new properties of various metals after the revival of Reiki. It even became possible to make weapons. This includes metal that can be used as weapons because of newly discovered properties. Zifei stuffed a test tube of sodium kalium alloy into his shirt. New materials cannot be compared to artifacts. After all, they can be put into mass production. Almost everyone will have the opportunity to purchase these weapons in the future. But such an opportunity will not be given to everyone. Lu Xu wondered to himself, could his own system allow him to create his own weapons? But the thought that his personal system is unreliable does not escape him. Simply put, it could fail at any moment. 
It's nighttime. The moon is so beautifully bright, it is surrounded by little stars. There is serenity in the sky along with the clouds. Lu Xu's house has light in the windows again. If he can sell 50 Tufu, he's already doing the math. Then he would have a profit of about 250 yuan and could take his little sister Xiao Yu to the movies. It's so expensive, he sighs. It takes a lot of money, I can't get away. He sits in the middle of his room. He has a holographic panel in front of him, and he's spending the negative points he's earned in the system on tofu. The whole room is already full, and he can't figure out why he's only getting one stinky tofu. And then he presses his finger on the holographic panel a lottery tab pops up. And this time he gets something worthwhile. Something of real value. Some golden leaf fell out. The bell rang. Yay, something really new, that's how excited Lu Xu was. He makes his way to this golden leaf through the piles of stinky tofu in his room. But then little sister Xiao Yu asks him what he's doing. She's just opening the door, this gold leaf appears right in front of her. She's surprised. And then this golden leaf touches her, and the abnormal state of her transformation begins. Lu Xu didn't even have time to touch her. She stands staring at her hands in surprise, and her whole body is enveloped in yellow energy. Awkward silence. Xiao Yu is glowing like a light bulb, and her older brother Lu Xu is frozen like a statue with his hand outstretched. And then she started screaming like crazy, angry at what had happened to her. But then Lu Xu tried to calm her down, so she wouldn't be afraid. What happened to her now won't hurt her. She just hasn't seen a piece of paper that glows so beautifully. But it's hard for her to stay calm. He urged little sister not to panic. We should first look into it and see if there were any abnormal changes in Xiao Yu's body. We need to calm down, close our eyes, and concentrate. Lu Xu asked her to describe what she saw. Energy fills her closed eyes. She begins to feel the power. She tells her big brother that she feels like she has a star in her chest. And not just one. There's seven of them. All these stars in her body are all very strange. Xiao Yu feels like a new person. She opened one eye and told her brother that all those stars in her body, they were creating a kind of black hole. Such a big fruit and beautiful Xiao Yu had never seen such a big fruit before. And big brother said that not only had she not seen it, she hadn't even tasted it. Lu Xu looked at his little sister and told her that this fruit should help her. And she happily prepared to chew on it. But then it flashed brightly and flew out of her hands. She didn't know what it meant, where he went, and yells at him to come back. It's no use. And then he came back and landed on Lu Xu's head, out of the blue. Xiao Yu looks at his older brother's smoking head. He can't understand what happened, but she was the one without the fruit. She wanted to eat it, and now it's smashed into Lu Xu's head. Xiao Yu pounced on her older brother with fists and tears and started beating him. Allegedly, he is bad and destroyed her fruit. Lu Xu noticed that her body was rejecting the star fruit. She's really going at it. She wants the fruit, and you can't get enough. She started swinging her arms and fists and hit her big brother on the head. And why doesn't he have anything on him right now? Then he grabbed the first piece of tofu he could find and shoved it into her mouth with all his might to shut her up. He told her to eat it and he had to exercise. Satisfied, she starts munching on the tofu. Lu Xu asks her what her stars inside require. This is all very strange. It's not a big deal. Why on earth would she sing to anyone? It's ridiculous. Lu Xu told her that he needed some time to himself. Little sister shouted a question to her brother as he left. He's sleeping face down on the bed. It's like someone or something is starting to bother him. One thought does not give him peace. What kind of system is this why his little sister does not sing a song and little star? Looking out the window, he says to himself that he can't let this little fish get the better of him. I guess he's got a little bit of ambition and pride in him. He closed his eyes and tried to concentrate on his inner sensations. It was certain that the sixth star would appear today. A beautiful neon light in the shape of a constellation illuminated the room. The full moon begins to transfer its energy and channel it into Lu Xu and Xiao Yu's home. The wind races green leaves across the yard, clear sky with lots of clouds. Lu Xu woke up. He quickly got up from the pillow. The moon's energy must have overwhelmed him. Examines his hands very carefully. He got what he wanted. He feels he's gotten a big charge out of this night. Here's a satellite of the earth. But it didn't affect him outwardly. His body was still in the same condition. Examining his face, Lu Xu had a vague doubt. Maybe the major changes have taken place on the inside. He takes a kitchen knife and places his other hand on the table. He wants to check how much the moon's energy has affected him. A little nervous, he swings the knife and wants to stab his hand with it. He's scared, though. Then he gathers the resolve to make that strike as quickly and accurately as possible. He builds up his strength and swings as hard as he can. There's a lot of energy concentrated in his right hand. He strikes his hand with the knife blade and it shatters. The blow was very hard. He is silent now. 
contemplating the broken knife smoking in his hand and his left hand where it struck. Surprised admiringly, he examines his left hand, no sign of damage. No fracture, no cut, no scratch. As if nothing had happened. He starts shouting and rejoicing in his room that his strength level has increased now. Xiao Yu woke up from her screams. Lu Xu is knocking on her room. He wants her to answer him quickly. He is very curious about what might have happened to her last night. He asks her to check her own star chart. Maybe the little sister has had some kind of change. He keeps knocking and knocking, even though she's sleepy and wants to sleep. But Lu Xu is persistent. The door opens and Xiao Yu tells his brother with a displeased look that it is very early. He tells her cheerfully that he's got six stars lit up. He wants to cheer her up somehow. He started bragging to his little sister and telling her that he could wait for her in his power development. The three stars were completely dark. What was that about? Xiao Yu yawns. She doesn't understand what her older brother wants from her. He says something to her and she doesn't take it in. Lu Xu notices this and realizes that she is too sleepy and to cheer her up and wake her up. He said that this morning they would eat noodles. The tomatoes will be fine. You can hear sounds of someone being uncomfortable and embarrassed. Heard from the neighboring door of the common house. Working with the tomatoes, Lu Xu is happy that at least they're okay. He trims them with a pair of scissors. He hears new sounds of the neighbor someone telling Lin Yang not to give it away. Lu Xu looked at the neighbor's door and saw that there were guests at Lin's house. I wonder where he could have seen this guy. He says he's sending something back. As soon as the ruins open the minute he does, he'll report it. Where could Lu Xu have seen this guy? And he remembered he was from the festival. I wonder why he came here. A thought rapidly occurred to him. The boy is also an awakened man. Lu Xu is standing on the sidelines with a basket of tomatoes. And neighbor Lin and her guests don't notice him at all. After a little thought, Lu Xu wonders what is so powerful in his house. Lu Xu tried to walk past the guy, so he wouldn't notice him. He looked at him in disbelief. He stood by the neighbor's porch for a while, thinking about something of his own. Until he left, he didn't feel like looking at him. To the new acquaintance of neighbor Lin, Lu Xu himself seemed very strange. Lu Xu realizes he's looking at him. He doesn't like it. Why does he do it for what purpose? He walks past this guy, doesn't say hello, just ignores him. He doesn't want to get involved with him. The guy starts yelling at Lu Xu to wait for him and not to leave. Maybe he remembered him too. Lu Xu is thinking why he wants to approach me. What's his goal? Does he really want to fight? And if he does, will he be able to stand up to him? Footsteps started toward Lu Xu. His shoes were beautiful. His leather shoes glistened in the sun. Lu Xu stopped. He doesn't turn around, just waits for him. I wonder what's on his mind. He's getting closer. He's got his arm out. He must want to strike. Lu Xu clutches the bowl of tomatoes tightly, and energy runs through his body. He notices with his sideways vision which way this guy in a suit is approaching him. Suddenly the tomatoes fall and break. It's a pity, of course, all that hard work, and the fruit is good. Their juice spills out onto the pavement. Lu Xu turned around and adopted a stance thought to repel the enemy's strike. But that stranger in a suit extended his hand to Lu Xu and wanted to just say hello to him. He recognized Lu Xu and said he was happy to see him. He understood everything perfectly. There shouldn't be any misunderstanding. His sly eyes gave him away. This time he was very well prepared. He repeated again that he was happy to see Lu Xu, even though he didn't believe him. It was no coincidence that he ended up at Lin's neighbor's house. Lu Xu interrogated the guy. How happy he was to see him. Very happy. If I wasn't happy, I wouldn't have come to say hello or extend my hands. Next, the stranger laughed. This embarrassed Lu Xu a little. He usually tried to make fun of everyone. Now he was being made fun of. The stranger had a strange cold energy and a cold air about him. As long as he didn't show any hostility towards Lu Xu, but there was no trust in him. Lu Xu said, You, and wondered what to ask him, to save time and understand his intention. Why he's so excited, exactly. It's just a simple meeting. A good question is the only thing Lu Xu could think of. And to be honest, it's stupid. Already the stranger is beginning to fear him. Maybe he senses I'm awakened too. And whether to prepare for an attack in his direction or a friendly conversation. There they stand looking at each other. They're both awakened. No doubt sensing everything. But now they're finding the words to talk. The energy in the room is very strong. You can't see it. But it can be perfectly felt. An awakened person of any level would be able to detect it. Lu Xu began to collect the scattered tomatoes back to his bowl. Although there are some battered tomatoes in addition to the whole ones. Gotta go. Can't be left unattended for long. Lu Xu still doesn't react to the guy in the nice suit. The stranger with gray hair didn't understand a thing. What had happened? No greeting, no attack. Just walked away and that was it. In surprise, he simply fell silent. 
Lu Xu quickly walked in and closed the door behind him. In his hands, he had an empty bowl with almost no tomatoes in it. Xiao Yu began to reprimand her big brother for how long to pick these poor tomatoes. He quickly gagged her and told her to shut up. There's an awakened man at their door, and there's no telling how he might be hostile towards them. Xiao Yu interjected. It's that old man in the courtyard. Yes, and things don't seem to be going well. This kind of feeling Lu Xu had never had before. Little sister told her big brother that he looks a lot like the big guy from gangster movies, and now he has to hide to heal his wounds. She told Lu Xu that she would train very hard to protect her big brother. Lu Xu really didn't like today's event. He and his sister have been hiding for so long. They don't want the publicity. They don't want people to know. The sun is shining on the empty courtyard. The gentle rays of the sun warm the whole place, and the wind barely ruffles the leaves of the tree. He strokes his little sister Xiao Yu's head and says he's going out to run errands and let her stay home. She waves at him with sadness and longing, and Lu Xu leaves. At times like this, she wants to grow up quickly. Lu Xu isn't sure if he'll spend the rest of his life selling tofu. It's not his destiny. And then he notices flashes of energy. I wonder where they're coming from. He turns his head and sees an old man practicing with a Chinese sword. He is practicing the techniques very skillfully. He meditates and concentrates at the same time as he strikes. The sword is the ideal weapon for a warrior's concentration. He's practicing with great professionalism, and Lu Xu can feel this energy flying around the old man. It's a mesmerizing sight. Lu Xu loved it. The energy was booming. It was powerful. The old man gathers maximum energy and concentrates it in a final blow. It seems as if he is pulling energy from the space around him and focusing it in one point. And then when he strikes, he transfers that energy just to the point he needs it. In fact, the sword he serves as a tool for concentrating energy. Lu Xu enjoys the aesthetics of combat and fighting techniques. He's sure it's a B-level power. It looks mesmerizing. Anything in the line of attack of this technique could have been destroyed, and the smoking leaves from the tree are proof of that. When he finished the exercise and his training, the old man defiantly put his sword back in its scabbard. The neighbors seem a little embarrassed. They didn't expect Lu Xu to go to work early today. He walked up to the old man with a box full of tofu and started asking the uncle what it was he was doing. Uncle politely replied to the guy that he was practicing his style of wielding a battle sword. Lu Xu smiled courteously and realized to himself, well, it is clear that the training was with a ball they with a mop. He started to say goodbye to the neighbors and go because he has to sell tofu, but his uncle asked him to stay. The uncle's wife wanted to hint to her husband that it's rude to keep a guy from doing his own thing, but he wanted to know something from Lu Xu. He wanted to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with his neighbor. Lao Li asked Lu Xu for some time. Something must have happened, he thought. He told the kid to look at his hands. He had a battle sword in his hands. He looked at that sword with great longing in his eyes. Lu Xu interrogated Lao Li, this sword is long and sharp must be, and got points from negative emotions into his piggy bank. Lao Li got angry and reprimanded him, and told him not to interrupt him, to be serious. You must respect your elders. He started the lecture for Lu Xu. With this sword, many things become much easier. It allows you to tap into the energy of nature. Lu Xu was very interested in what Lao Li was talking about. Energy and strength is a way to increase his potential. For a brief moment, Lao Li pulled out a sword from its sheath and showed Lu Xu the sharpness of this sword, then quickly put the sword back in its scabbard and said what this sword's name was. Holding it in front of Lu Xu's nose, he asked the guy how he liked it. Lu Xu was in awe of this sword. Lao Li holding a sword asked the young boy if he would like to learn sword martial arts. Lu Xu looked at the old man carefully. At first, he liked Lao Li's suggestion, but then he had a sudden change of heart. He tried to find some excuse or reason why he didn't want to upset the old man too much. And then eventually he just said, I don't want to, that's all. And it was like a hard blow to the old man's head. He wasn't expecting it. Thought the young guy would be up for the opportunity. He told the old man that he had nothing to do as if he had enough on his mind. And he ran quickly to the gate with the door and said goodbye. Lao Li got very angry and told his wife how dare he answer like that. But his wife politely told her husband that nowadays people don't want to study at all. But the old man said looking at his sword that he had very little time. There must be a successor. He can't afford to lose this battle technique. All this knowledge. A disciple must surely be found. That's good to hear. If the opportunity arises, Lu Xu would like to be his apprentice. That kind of knowledge can't go to waste. And the energy buzzing around the old man as he practiced his moves with the ball was indescribable. Just like the other night. Why I wonder why Lao Li took offense so much even when Lu Xu had gone so far. What was the reason? He stands and counts the points of negative emotions that are once again adding up to his piggy bank. School cafeteria. Yes, it's clean and comfortable, great lighting, lots of fun noise. 
Teenagers are very energetic. Lu Xu reflects that for today, he has generally earned a lot of points on negative emotions. There's a box of tofu on the table. He's sitting quietly at the dining room table eating tofu, drinking tea and drinking it all from a big mug. It's not easy and it's hard for him. It's a shame he has to eat tofu for lunch, but you have to make money. Out of the blue, a cell phone appeared in front of his face. He got a little scared. His classmate snuck up on him. Lu Xu told him he really scared him, but the classmate pulled him away to show him something cool. He won't put the phone away. He's turning on the video. He says the video was recently posted online. And to make a long story short, it's a good opportunity. The video shows an awakened guy doing a commercial for a soccer team. He kicks the ball and it goes up in flames. The first thing Lu Xu thought was that the foreigner was very fat. The classmate thought Lu Xu would really like the idea. He starts to chew him up. A lot of big companies send promotional offers to the awakened. Not many get the opportunity. Lu Xu asked his classmate and what he would do. Since he had suggested this kind of income, a classmate said pathetically that he wants to reach the heavens and roll mountains. His company is also ready to invest heavily in this area. So I inadvertently asked Lu Xu if he'd like to be in the awakened recruitment business. Sort of like a recruitment agency. He knew what to push. And he knew that Lu Xu and his little sister were very poor. Apart from the stall, they have nothing. They're almost starving. But Lu Xu asked Liu Li, Does he know Mr. Liang Jingru? He's a famous man. Liu Li replied in surprise that he didn't know such a name. He had never even met such a name. Lu Xu asked him where this positive attitude came from then and what it was related to. Liu Li was very angry with Lu Xu. He added to his negative points. He slammed his hand on the dining room table in anger, so much so that the whole dining room took notice. Oh, then Liu Li told Lu Xu that he had just wasted his time on him. He shouldn't have done it. The other guys started to pick on Liu Li for being arrogant and not having any friends. He tried to shut everyone up, but it didn't help. Lu Xu kept eating tofu and thought about the fact that he was fine. At least he and his sister weren't starving. Lu Xu's house on a beautiful evening. The windows are wide open and the light shines through those windows. There's a lot of magnifying fruit on the table. About seven pieces. Lu Xu takes them one by one. And he eats deliciously. And looks at his little sister with bewilderment. Maybe even with mockery. She's sitting there sulking really hard. She'd like to eat that fruit too. But she knows she won't get any. Well, she's explaining to her what she already knows. She may not even look at the fruit. But she can't eat them anyway. But she wonders why there's so much of it. He smiles slyly at his little sister. A terrible tofu stench that made people cringe and spit. And because of that, he earned negative emotion points. Then he traded those points at the store for fruit enlargements. And Lu Xu greedily stuffs the remaining fruit into his mouth. These pathetic puppets bring him points of negative emotions walking Klondike. Then he told his little sister he'd watch cartoons with her a little later. He coughed and walked out of the kitchen. Very interesting feelings began to creep up on the young lad. He felt a fluctuation in space. Then a great wave of energy and power came over him. It was not abrupt, but gradual and very, very strong. His body turned into a solid star map. The constellations of the galaxy planets were marked on it. Lu Xu tried to understand what the new energy in his body was. He began to scrutinize the glow emanating from his hand. Everything was so unusual to him. Suddenly he felt the seven stars energy in your chest. It pulsed very strongly and flowed throughout his body and began to form a star vortex very similar to everything Xiaoyu told him. A star map appeared in the room, and all these stars began to revolve around the last star, which appeared somehow after all of them. She was the brightest and caught Lu Xu's eye the most. They were all beautiful. Well, this one stood out in her own way. The young boy thought she was the brightest. She had the most energy and the brightest light. And then he saw someone's evil grimace in the bright purple light. It had evil eyes and predatory teeth. It appeared right in the center, instead of a star. Then he saw the seven stars orbiting the sword, vortexes of dark energy. Lu Xu tried to reach him, but met with great resistance. We just wanted to touch that sword. That didn't mean he wanted to take it for himself. The closer he got to the weapon, he realized it was a little smaller in size. But through sheer will and persistence, he was able to get it. After all, power had always interested him. Holding this weapon in his right hand, he struggled to match its energy and power. There is peace. He is full of concentration and focus. Lu Xu succeeded in getting his hands on the weapon. It wasn't really a sword, but a dagger. He started Vovka wielding it, swinging it left and right and juggle. The seven stars were associated with the seven chakras of a person. Lu Xu received a dagger and new power, and with it, new energy power. Lu Xu is holding a dagger, the one he just received. 
He can't make out that this dagger is the seven stars that formed in his soul. An angry Xiao Yu comes up from behind, and he is in his thoughts. He has some strange feeling because this dagger is more like a stationary envelope knife. A little sister jumps on her brother and clings to his neck. While he thinks, examining the dagger, whether he will need to learn the art of swordsmanship. Like old man Lao Li, I mean he exercises his sword every morning. Xiao Yu starts strangling Lu Xu with all her might. She is cranky and really wants to watch the cartoon. The older brother gives in. He agrees. They go together to watch funny cartoons. Full moon over the city. Some ninja-like silhouettes are silently skittering across the rooftops. They stopped on one rooftop looking at the house of Lu S. They have fancy clothes with hoods and cloaks and ribbons. One of them reports that a suspicious person has been spotted. They look like some kind of nocturnal hunters, trying to listen to the sounds and energy fluctuations around him. If it's a suspicious person, then there must be traces. They saw an old elderly woman standing in the yard. She's not a threat. She's just a civilian. The man in charge received the report. His gaze was cautious and focused on the civilian. Lao Li's wife stood in the middle of the courtyard. Her gaze gave her away. She looked like a simple, cordial old lady, but her eyes said that she had seen a lot of things in her life. The reinforcements of the other night hunters approached Lu Xu's house. Their commander and leader warned that no one was allowed to move even without orders. A powerful flaming energy enveloped him. He jumped right in front of the old lady, sparking her with sparks of flame. And she stood still and still. Lao Li was sitting in his chair at home. He was reading a book. Turning his head slightly toward the exit, he looked at his wife. He was wise. The time had come. He was not confused by the visit of the chief leader of the night hunters. On the contrary, he was looking forward to it. The leader was approaching the old woman. He was filled with fiery energy. It was like he wanted to burn everything in the neighborhood. Lu Xu noticed something. At the same time, he was wrestling with his little sister over the TV remote. But he was attracted by the noises outside. A little later, he felt a very big energy. So he decided to look out of the house and see what it was. He only caught the edge of his eye as the leader entered. Even without much experience, he understood everything perfectly. This man was very strong. Energy was coming out of him in a giant stream. He's a level a must-have. The old woman recognized him. This young man is the leader of the Night Hunters. His name was Li Yang. Lu Xu was quietly watching everything from his window. Little Xiao Yu jumped behind and drank that too. She is curious and wants to watch. Li Yan saw Lu Xu's face. He turned his gaze towards the guy. Lu Xu quickly hid himself. He was scared. The only thought in his mind was that he had been spotted. And it was coming for him. Lao Li's wife looked at the new guest. I wasn't afraid of him. It was epic. Li Yang and all radiated fiery energy. He greeted the landlady and said he had come to see Mr. Li. I could tell by the look in his eyes that the old woman didn't like him. She had been expecting him, but she was not happy about it. Lu Xu reasoned to himself that most likely Uncle Neighbor was hiding from his enemies. But they found him. And they came here, where he and his little sister live. Lao Li greeted his guest. Tian Luo is a strong organization, and today they came to visit him. Lao Li's wife looked at her husband. Maybe she made a mistake and didn't hear him well. So she looked at him with a question on her face. Lao Li repeated his invitation. Li Yang could safely enter his house. Tian Luo. Lu Xu had heard of them somewhere before. He was standing behind the wall trying to listen to the conversation between his old man neighbor and his guest. This is when he remembers his Tao Yang class, where they told him what the organization was and what it does. It's a state organization. I have very few members less than 10, and all of them have a strength level no less than level B. It's organized as a brotherhood. Qian Lu is the best and strongest among them. Lu Xu smirked. The strongest gifted people should definitely be known by name. There aren't that many of them. Qian Lu was indeed one of the strongest gifters. His appearance alone inspired awe and caution in his enemies. Although he was the chief of the order, his clothes were no different. The air conditioner is working properly, maintaining the right humidity and temperature to keep the owners comfortable. There's a special thermoset for dinner. Keeps it from getting cold. Keeps the food warm longer. Tian Lu tells Lao Li that if the Reiki is restored early, then they will not be able to destroy the foundation. Lao Li replied, leisurely pouring tea into a cup that everyone has their own destiny, their own path to follow and to each their own. The two of them sat around a small desk, across from each other, and talked over a cup of tea. The other person showed great respect for Mr. Lee. Old man Lao didn't answer anything. He only sat quietly and enjoyed his tea. Then he looked at Tian Lu and asked him to voice his proposal, so that the two of them could discuss it. Tian Lu began to speak. He told the old man about the rejuvenation effect 
Would the old man want to join them? That was the question. Xiao Yu, with a homemade phone made of two cups and string, tries to eavesdrop on his neighbor's conversation. She sits on her older brother's neck, but tells him she can't hear anything at all. Lu Xu tells her to pay more attention. Tian Lu tells Lao Li that the last seat is still available, and the man quietly drinks his tea. He doesn't seem at all interested in the offer, and then he started coughing very intensely. Well, age takes its toll and with it all sorts of diseases. Then when he coughed, he told his interlocutor that he was sorry he looked like a lousy old man in his eyes who could get sick from even one cup of water, and besides, their bodies are very different, and Lao Li would very much like to spend his remaining time, his old age, in peace and tranquility. Tian Lu heard this answer, but he didn't like it. He had expected something completely different. Although as wise people say, in order not to be disappointed, you don't have to be enchanted. Maybe Ni Mu was overreacting when he compared himself to Lao Li. There can only be one foundation director in China. As soon as all the medical materials are found, they will be sent to the old man immediately. How I wish that one day Tian Lu will meet the foundation no opponents. The foundation wants to protect the whole world, while Ni Mu only wants to protect the surrounding land. Lao Li held up a cup of tea and paid his respects to the peaceful year. The warrior turned and drew his sword, and told the old man to be sure to take care of himself. He cared for him after all. The entire squad, including the leader, left Lu Xu's house. It was as if they were never there. They headed off into the distance where the moonlight shines, leaving no trace or noise behind them. Lao Li's wife asked her husband if he was well. He went out to her courtyard after the conversation. He made a pensive face and repeated to Tian Luo. It was obvious from his face that he was very puzzled about something. This unit is a powerful force to be reckoned with, and it's better to be their friend than their enemy. On a beautiful morning, warm rays of sunlight slip over Lu Xu's house, and the birds are chirping. The swing of a battle sword can be heard slicing through the air, swinging swift and sharp, a clear blow. Lao Li is doing his morning exercise and practicing his sword strokes as usual. A bird flew over him. Then he hears Lu Xu's voice saying goodbye to her little sister, not going to go back to selling tofu at her stall. Lao Li begins to train harder and hone his techniques. To get the boy interested in sword training, he did it. Lu Xu noticed that today's training was especially interesting and intense. He praised the old man. His mastery of the sword is mesmerizing. Finished practicing his fighting moves, he got what he needed. The most important thing for him is the interest of the young lad. This knowledge must be passed on to the student. And then Lao Li starts in on the guy. Strike while the iron is hot. If he likes it, we should offer him training again. Maybe he'll accept this time. Lu Xu said that he had some difficulties in this regard. That it's not that simple. Lao Li reacted calmly and cheerfully. He calmed the boy down and said that any difficulties and problems would immediately disappear from his path, even when money matters are involved. The old man asked the guy how much he needed. Lao Li asked the kid to tell him about his problems. He sincerely expressed his desire to help. Lu Xu said it was nothing special. I'd really like to know what he can learn. It's important to him before he starts wasting time. The old man started bragging that he knew some of the sciences very well and that he could share this knowledge with his future apprentice. Lu Xu liked that, from a man of experience, it's really great. He asked his future teacher to help him control his little sister, gave him certain conditions, and he quickly called his little sister Xiao Yu. He called her very interesting and affectionate. And then the front door burst open. It looked like it had been kicked in. But Lu Xu reassured Lao Li that it was easy to get along with this little girl. She came out of the house angry. She asked her brother what he wanted from her this time. He warned his little sister... A little later, she would go to see Master Li and he would check her completed tasks. Lao Li's not happy about being involved in all this. If she misbehaves, she won't get any goodies. And that's when Lu Xu got his negative emotion points. Xiao Yu looked at Master Li with a very dissatisfied look. It was obvious to him that he was being stared at. Well, he's doing fine. Lu Xu said goodbye to everyone and went out to the common wicket of the house. He went to sell tofu. An awkward silence persists. The old man and the little girl look at each other. Some spark of tension passed between them. Lao Li didn't like this idea, and the displeasure could be read on his face. Xiao Yu is eating like crazy. She stuffs all kinds of delicious things into her mouth. The lady of the house calms her down. She says there's still plenty of food to eat. Lao Li is very unhappy. He's a B-level martial arts expert, not a babysitter for little girls. Then he called out to Xiao Yu and said that class was about to start. Yes, of course, she was distracted from her meal. They are sitting in the middle of the room at a desk. The old man checks the completed assignments. You had to trace the entire outline to make a dog. Although it was not easy for Lao Li to understand such tasks, you really surprised him. He was looking as hard as he could. 
trying to see if the little one had done it right or wrong. But he really liked Xiao Yu's handwriting. It's very neat and clean for a child. Next, he started flipping through his assignment book to prepare for the future and to understand roughly how difficult it was and what exactly would be required. Then he put the notebook on the table, carefully spread it out so the pages wouldn't get wrinkled, that it's not a waste of time, and he's training the right person. That goes for her brother Lu Shu. The day changed. The very next morning, an intense training session awaited the young lad. Lao Li knocked on a young boy's door early in the morning. Lu Shu sleepily opened the door with surprise. He warned Lu Shu that from now on he would do all the strength training. He had already prepared 15 kilogram bags. Well, you can start with the lightest of the bags. The old man winked cheerfully at the young lad. He seemed to be energized by the enthusiasm. With a disgruntled look while putting the bags on his feet, Lu Shu said that Lao Li should have spoken up about it earlier. Lao Li was very much surprised. After all, the guy immediately put on 150 kilogram bags. He questioned the student. Is he doing well? Does he feel normal with that weight? Lu Shu said he could hardly feel the weight. The old man thought for a moment. Yes, this is really very good indeed. The guy can handle his training weight already at the beginning of his training. Lao Li remembered that he was only able to move up to a higher weight after he had been walking with the smallest one for several years. Lu Shu is full of enthusiasm. He wants to continue on without slowing down. The old man thinks that he didn't make a mistake with his choice. He has chosen the right person. Lao Li gave the boy a practice sword and told him to begin with, we need to do a little test. He told him to make a thousand swings with that sword. You'd have to feel every muscle in your body. You have to show what you can do. Lu Shu doesn't know what's going on. After all, the old man wanted him to learn the art of swordsmanship. Droplets of sweat spread left and right. Lu Shu diligently swings his sword one after another. The blade swiftly cuts through the air. Even though the sword is a training sword, it has a good weight. It's been so long since Lu Shu has tried so hard. He is really exercising his conscience right now. A strong man should be able to control his body perfectly. Lao Li asked how he thought who could really become a strong person. Lu Shu continues to refine his punches. Another turn and swing. He concentrates on the sword. Someone who ignores all rules and laws can be considered a strong person. Strength is to remain always yourself. Lu Shu feels a surge of energy. He looks at his teacher and realizes that this power is coming from him. Lao Li approvingly agreed with him and asked the boy, in what way could he become a strong man? The old man grabbed a leaf from the tree and that leaf started to smoke in his hands like he was setting it on fire. This old man strikes with his hand as if his hand were a sword. It was pretty spectacular. This struck Lu Shu very hard. He had never seen anything like this before. To be struck with a hand as well as a sword. And he wonders in his head if he's imagining it. It really is a sword. The blow was scathing and precise. Lao Li begins to wonder and brag to the young student. He has no idea how lucky he is to have a teacher. With a sword alone, a strong man is able to cleave the heavens. It's a certainty like an instinct an instinct of strength. These things require professionalism. Lu Shu got excited. He said he understood everything and wanted to continue. He had no idea that a real month held such power. An old man asked a young man, if one day he becomes great, will he be able to take on the responsibility of greatness? He said straight and honest, no, he's only responsible for living well and taking care of his little sister Xiao Yu. The old man smiled and wondered. This guy had turned down his offer so quickly. It was either a surprise or a disappointment to him. Lu Shu continued, Not only now he is not going to be great and take responsibility, he doesn't want to help the others. The guy answered very coldly and calculatingly. He is already struggling just by living in this world. So he apologizes to the teacher. But he is not going to serve the illusions of high ideals. Lao Li furrowed his brow. He understood everything perfectly. He was too naive to think that Lu Shu would agree. It wasn't his fault because life was not easy. The old man listened to the boy carefully. He said that from now on he could not be his mentor. Well, still be able to teach him ball skills and slowly influence him to pay attention to the lives of those around him. The old man is trying to screw in the light bulb carefully so he doesn't break it and so it doesn't fall and break. Interesting, Lao Li thought, and the child has already given up and asks little Xiao Yu for help. Standing on a stool, he asked the little girl if she would like to help people in the future. She calmly told him she didn't want to, she was her brother's little sister. She was his brother's little sister. Lao Li smiling at her said he helped her by changing a light bulb for her so that she could have light. Xiao Yu grudgingly told him that the house they live in has old wiring and Big Brother should replace it. Next, she began to manipulate the old man. 
She pressed his age and said that with such a long life experience it would be easy for him to change a light bulb. The old man's anger at her boiled up like a volcano. He had nothing better to say to her, except to check her homework, lots of corrections, and red paste, not one correct answer. The girl probably didn't try hard enough. The old man scrutinized the example. He was a little confused. He didn't understand it. Xiao Yu asked Lao Li, Isn't he bad at astronomy and geography? What could be the problem he's supposed to be good at it? And then he burned. The old man jumped up from his chair and started yelling. That he wasn't kidding and when he was in private school the baby hadn't even been born yet. I wonder how old he is. The old man proudly replied that he was 81 years old. And then she decided to get the old man with her question. She's 10 years old. So Lao Li must have been 71 when he was studying. What about the other years? You can already see that sitting at the same table they hate each other. There are sparks of tension between them. Xiao Yu looks at the old man and thinks to herself, If he wants to rehabilitate her and teach her manners, it won't be easy. The old man knows he hasn't lived his life in vain. He has a high level of strength after all. And then there was an extraneous voice. It said this one. Then the two of them turned around and screamed frantically, because someone had dared to distract them which made them very angry. A very friendly young man with glasses stood on the doorstep. He said he could help the old man solve the equation. Then he said courteously that Mr. Lee, the landlord, didn't seem to be very happy with him. An uninvited guest is the worst. With a serious look, he introduced the young man Xiao Yu. He said he was an old friend of his and asked the little girl to say hello to him. But the little bugger pointed his finger at the wicket and told him to go far away. That didn't embarrass the old man's friend one bit. He smiled and joked about how small her finger was. Calculations occupy Lu Xu's head. He is heavily concentrated on them. The negative emotion points are coming in. But very much wondered, despite all this, why Xi Shuijin disliked him. And at the top are the glasses from Li Xiangyi. Something must have happened to Xiao Yu's sister. Suddenly he stands up abruptly from his desk and tells his class teacher that he has to leave immediately. The teacher is agitated and asks something must have happened that must be serious. He made up some stupid excuse. Allegedly, he's registered on an official Chinese instant messaging site. He's made up his mind he's leaving. The teacher won't let him and tells him to wait. Negative emotion points are coming in again. He ran home like a scalded man. And he'd burst into the house screaming fishy, fishy, fishy. That was his little sister's nickname. He's kicking down the front door of Lao Li's neighbor. He was very afraid something had happened to her. Negative emotion points just didn't do the same thing. But then what he saw surprised him. I guess he was wrong about kicking in the door. Standing there was an old man and his young friend. Xiao Yu was sitting at the table, and all three of them stared at Lu Xu, like he was crazy. Lu Xu is frightened by strangers. He's very cautious. So he immediately asked the old man who this young man was. Without waiting for Lao Li's reply, the young stranger with glasses answered the boy, that he was exactly the one he was thinking of. Immediately, Lu Xu thought that it was a handyman, an electrician who was supposed to fix the wiring in the house. The negative emotion points came in again. Lao Li introduced him as Mr. Shi Shui Jing. He is from Tian Luo's unit, but without any potential. He has no strength. Shi Shui Jin said that even if the foundation is destroyed, the founders and managers are still respected. It's good when young people are polite. Shi Shui Jing emphasized that Lao Li is a role model. He inherited the Jiang Ge. Mr. Shu founded the Dao Yang class. Lu Xu understood now. That's where the Dao Yang class comes from. And now I understand where the curriculum comes from. Shi Shui Jin, he designed them. But for what purpose? Why would he go to such trouble? It's definitely for a reason, not out of noble motives. Just two days ago in Tao Yang's class, during a regular class, all the disciples looked on in awe at what was happening. This exercise is called the dual ceremony. Class leader Si Fei said that now only the first part of the dual ceremony would be spoken. She warned that the first stage must be completed before moving on to the second stage, the different potential of students means different speed of adaptation. Spiritual practice requires great perseverance. Everyone was sitting in lotus position and emitted energy. Si Fei repeated that they would all feel the completion of the first stage when they returned. Lu Xu felt a surge of strength in his chest. He was greatly surprised and frightened by this. He had never practiced this kind of practice before. And then he saw his dagger of seven stars. It appeared as a projection of the seven chakras of human energy and then that dagger swiftly and unimpeded towards the lone star. It was spectacular. In the middle of the star was an oblong hexagon. Ancient Chinese symbols were visible on it. The dagger of the seven stars pierced through the hexagon. A very large amount of energy was generated. Sparks flew in different directions. 
Lu Xu grabbed the dagger and shouted at him not to break the hexagonal cylinder. If he broke it, it would be bad for the two of them. This exercise is very difficult to perform with a dominant star chart, because other methods become useless against its background. If Mr. Xu somehow finds out about Lu Xu's exercises, he'll be in trouble, and he doesn't want that to happen. Mr. Xu told old man Lao Li that he had not yet introduced this young man to him. He doesn't know his name. The old man jokingly replied that the little bugger lives next door. He has F-level potential. He's in Tao Yang's class. Lu Xu jokingly said that he would take his little sister and leave them alone with each other, and leave them alone together, and thanked Grandpa Li for his help. Mr. Xu wondered if these children were definitely just the old man's neighbors. Lao Li is sipping his hot tea, slowly, leisurely. He brewed it a short time ago. They got straight to the point. The old man asked Mr. Xu what happened, why he came to visit him. There are signs of recovery in the ruins, all over the country. These ruins are an integral part of the state. Mr. Xu sincerely hopes the foundation will not interfere. Also emphasized that of course the old man could kill him with his sword. There would be no one to stop him. He's beyond his strength. Lao Li waved his hand in a businesslike manner and said he knew his business well. He understood it well, and now he could go. Mr. Xi bowed to the old man, thanked him, and said that his ninth place Tian Luo would be waiting for him. To which Lao Li replied that he was just a decrepit old man, and he's long since lost his energy and spirit. Mr. Xi smiled and told him that he was still in contemplation, and if he had any difficulties with the equations again, he could always help him. The old man yelled and told Mr. Xu to get out. The evening meal is cooked in a skillet. The vegetables and meat smell pleasantly. The heated sunflower oil sizzles pleasantly. Lu Xu is cooking dinner for himself and his little sister Xiao Yu. He's good at it. Xiao Yu tells his older brother that the old man disrespected him, even though he has a math problem, and thanks Lu Xu for being such a good cook. Lu Xu started to make excuses for Lao Li. His grandfather is protecting him, and he's constantly surrounded by very serious people. The best defense is anonymity. The naughty little thing understood. She'll treat the old man better from now on. Well, generally speaking, you don't need your little sister to look overly polite to look really good. Well, now he prepared to collect negative emotion points, but it was too polite. Not this time. Suddenly, the voice of old Lao Li could be heard outside the door. He was happy that he had solved her math problem. Lu Xu politely opened the door in front of the old man and said hello to him. Lao Li held out the example solution sheet to him. The old man must have tried very hard. Then I asked the guy a question. What's he afraid of since his power potential is level F, if he's telling the truth? But something tells the old man, because of his years of experience, that Lu Xu is not F level. The historian showed him two vials of potassium sodium solution. It was Lu Xu's blood that was in this metal. Lao Li slyly looked at the guy and said that he should know very well what was inside those test tubes. Potassium sodium solution. In Dao Yang's class, they should have explained it to him. Lu Xu tried to make a joke. He said that he had already taken the test. He knows his level well, F level. So he thinks it's a waste of time. The old man waved his hand. He didn't want to hear anything. He said in an orderly manner to show him the results in the morning. Lu Xu remained silent and looked at the old man with displeasure. He really didn't like this tone. Xiao Yu asked him, what does he intend to do? He either has to reveal the truth of how things really are, or not do the test. He quickly gagged his sister. He told her to do the test right away and then talk. Night. The moon is high in a clear sky. It's surrounded by beautiful little stars and the clouds are floating. The windows of Lu Xu and Xiao Yu's house are lit. You can hear the night crickets singing their melody. There's some kind of strange reaction going on. Sodium potassium solution reacts very strangely with blood. At first they both stare. They can't understand anything. Then Xiao Yu asks Lu Xu if this could be a new level. Then an extremely violent reaction occurs with the release of large quantities of gas and temperature. The test tube exploded. There's a liquid on the floor that's star-colored, and there are shards of a glass test tube everywhere. The next day, the weather stood canceled. The sun was high in the sky, not a hint of rain. Lu Xu is sitting at his counter. He looks sleepy and tired. There is a box of tofu next to him. A fellow customer comes up to him and asks him, does he have any of that stinky tofu he'd like to munch on? Lu Xu opens the box and says there's plenty of this stuff, and the guy just reaches into the box to grab one for himself. And then Lu Xu cuts him off and says they're not for sale. He walks away mad as hell and says the salesman is crazy. And that's when the negative emotion points to the piggy bank. Thoughtfully and cheerfully, he says to himself, I need more development points. It's nice that negative emotions directed toward my little sister count too. So old man Lao Li, hang in there. That naughty little thing won't let you get bored. 
and it'll get on your nerves. The old man started coughing a lot. You could blame it on his age, but he seemed sick. Xiao Li calmly tells his old teacher that if grandpa is sick, he needs to take medicine. It's not worth the hassle. The old man asked about that sodium chloride test. He and his brother were supposed to take it last night. The little girl was a little confused, thought of a way to change the conversation. She asked her old teacher if he had talked to Lu Xu about it. The old teacher laughed softly, but he kept to himself. He realized that these kids weren't ordinary. The potential of these kids is truly unique. However, they still don't trust Lao Li. The wind whips the leaves plucked from the tree around the yard and sends them high into the sky. The school where Lu Xu goes to now. Classmates say that the head of the class is really brilliant. Lu Xu walks past the laughing classmates. Something new must have happened. He didn't know. He missed something. He sat down in his usual seat and told his neighbor that the classmates were shouting so loud they could be heard downstairs. I don't know what they're into. Why would someone be holding a green onion? It's really very strange. He has an aura in his hand to help with plant cultivation. This classmate advanced to the next level last night, so they're all celebrating now. Lu Xu wondered how it was possible for the next stage to happen so quickly. It takes time. They said it would take nine days for each stage. Parents are in a classmate, bought us a piece of blessed earth, and his training results doubled. But the blessed earth has some big downsides. Lu Xu started sucking up and asked Jiang, What is this blessed land? He had never heard of it before. Blessed Earth is a definite place filled with energy and aura. They help in recovery after training. Not only is it good for human exercise, but it is also very fruitful for animal plants. It is true that there are different types of blessed earth. For example, the land owned by the Liu Li family will eventually harm the body, because the aura there is not completely pure. There's always a catch. Nothing just happens. Lu Xu remembers that Zhang's potential is level B. Zhang said that he had already done it for two days. The blessed land in his house is a little better. It is helpful to have friends like this, has high-level potential and has information. Zhang is different from others. Classmates chant and ask that the commander show them how to move to the next stage of potential. Ling Chi is showing off in front of everyone, like a peacock. Let them all look at him, but he doesn't see anyone who can compete with him in arm wrestling. If there are any brave men in the class, Lu Xu volunteered to compete with him. He offered the headman just one bout. Ling Chi looked at his opponent with disdain and agreed. He realized that Lu Xu was no match for him. They held hands very tightly, that it was honest, no fraud in front of many witnesses. Everyone is watching the fight with excitement, and they cheer up the head boy as much as they can. He's a real star in the class. Unlike Lu Xu, Ling Chi takes revenge on the smart guy. Since Lu Xu humiliates and embarrasses him in his daily life, at least in the field of sports, he'll slap his face in the mud. They started fighting, Everyone's eyes lit up bright red, the angry color of struggle and battle. A moment later, Lu Xu defeated his opponent, crushing his left arm. Lin Chi was just stunned by it. He just didn't expect that such a thing was possible. The points of negative emotions sprinkled and went into the piggy bank. Lu Xu apologized to the chief. He said his left hand was stronger. Maybe it's better to try his right hand again. The same thing happened. Lu Xu came out a complete winner. This was predictable for Lu Xu. Lin Chi felt his loss extremely painful. He is still in shock and can't come to his senses. Lu Xu flies in the clouds, satisfied with himself. He feels that strength overflows into him. It was as if he had awakened with physical power. Then he started making fun of the defeated man, like he woke up with the hands of the headman and started thanking him. The head teacher is mad as hell. The whole class is picking on him. Lu Xu thinks it's a logical awakening. Zhang asked Lu Xu if he had really awakened. He asked it hopefully. He doesn't know what happened. Lu Xu suddenly felt energy in his body, and then he woke up. Zhang advised his classmate, Don't forget to tell the class teacher about it, that you have awakened. Middle school night. Tao Yang class, Shi Fei is happy, and she already knows the disciples and holds two rainbow crystals in her hands. These two stones are level B potential resources. They increase the cultivation efficiency. But independent awakened ones could also receive two stones a month. Zi Fei held them in her hand and showed them to all the students. Lu Xu scrutinized the stone and realized to himself that the spiritual stone is cool but he couldn't use it with his aura. Zheng asked Lu Xu about his impressions. After all, he didn't lie to him but told him the truth. And then Lu Xu had the perfect idea, just in the nick of time. It's good to have an epiphany at the right time. And he tells Zhang he has a very serious case for him and he hopes he'll be interested in it. Lu Xu suggested that Zhang buy a spiritual stone. Its condition was perfect. He wanted to make a good profit from it. Zhang was simply horrified. After all, they are controlled by Tian Luo, 
and selling them carries a very serious punishment. He couldn't believe that his interlocutor was in his right mind. Lu Xu started pulling a comedy act and saying that this spirit stone is supposedly very precious to him. How painful it is in his heart to part with it. He and his little sister are orphans, and their finances depend on the morning market sales. Xiao Yu has to go to school this year, and that requires a lot of money. Zi Fei said that one should study very hard, but it's his responsibility to feed his sister, and the efficiency of training is not enough. He managed to get Zhang to sympathize, and he said he would definitely help him a cunning and cunning snake. Zhang took out his smartphone and started searching for a buyer. In the black market, one such spirit stone costs about a hundred thousand, but if you try and look hard enough, you can find a buyer for a hundred and twenty thousand. Lu Xu's mind was blown. That's a lot of money. No wonder the transportation of spirit stones is handled by the army. Zhang and Lu Xu shook hands. Lu Xu was very happy, and Zhang was very sad. Moonlight night has fallen over the city. The wind wonders at the young leaves. A month of light illuminates the alley. I can hear the dialing of the pin numbers at the ATM. 240,250 yuan. This is a very huge amount of money for Lu Xu and Xiao Yu. Lu Xu seeing this sum of six numbers is simply speechless with amazement, and then he feels like he's bathed in money and gold glitter. It's all so bright and carefree. He was already dreaming of all sorts of goodies and chicken and desserts, and expensive cars and yachts, airplanes. And then he remembered his sister's voice. She asked if she and her brother would always live in this house. This place could really be their home, and they will live there happily ever after. Lu Xu remains calm and makes his fateful decision. He pulls out his cell phone and dials a number, waits for a while, it beeps. There's a voice on the other end of the wire, and he says hello. They ask him if the house is still on the market. Very early in the morning, the sun has barely had time to rise. There's music playing. It helps you concentrate on your training. The music, of course, is specific. It's rhythmic and lively. It caresses the ear. With it, you don't notice how quickly the training goes by. Lu Xu's punches are crisp and powerful. His movements are precise and accurate. Lao Li said that one must remember a martial arts fighter, and developing his perseverance, he becomes invincible. And to himself, the old man thinks. The kid swings a sword every day. He doesn't give up and keeps at it. Soon the water will reach the canal. He walked over to the tape recorder and turned it off. And today's training is over. The student has had enough. Lu Xu is wondering why practice is at this time, because it's so early. What's the reason? The old man brags that it's a long story. When he was training as a young man himself, his master's roosters used to wake him up at three o'clock in the morning. Lu Xu asked why only this music is played during practice, and when can we start learning new techniques? The art of ball handling is constantly changing, but the master has only one move in mind. The young boy asked the old man when he could learn a real technique, at least one. Lao Li made an uncomprehending face and said that he had level F. What more did he need? This training is enough for his level. Or maybe Lu Xu isn't level F. And then it was like a weight fell on the guy's head. It was an argument. So this old man is cunning. He's very well prepared. A real fox. He's got a lot of life experience. Lu Xu showed the old man his determination, on which to swing his sword even faster and harder. A little while later, about seven o'clock in the morning, the air is warmed by the sun's rays. The doors open. Lu Xu calls out to her sister for her to get out of bed. Xiao Yu came out all angry with black circles under her eyes. She didn't sleep all night. Big Brother asked her what she was doing. This old man had homework that was too much to sleep on. Ten binary equations. And she just wouldn't go to bed. Lu Xu got angry in vain because she didn't go to bed. It was to do her homework. Today, they're going out for a walk. The big shopping mall, Super Plaza. This is where Lu Xu always wanted to take his sister. This time, he bought Xiao Yu new clothes. She's so pretty, all bows and ruffles. Pretty ribbons in her hair, she's so pretty. She's just shining with happiness. A new outfit means a lot to a girl. The satisfied brother pays with his card. He also buys her a new cell phone, pink like she's always wanted, and the latest model. And then they came to a toy vending machine, and Xiao Yu chose one she liked. It looked like a Pikachu mouse. And so, with his deft movements, he gets this toy out of the machine for his little sister, and then she asks her older brother, he must have done something terrible and now wants to apologize to her for it. Sometimes from female logic riddle, she's looking at him with angel eyes, holding her new toy and tells him he's never been so good. Very much like a parting gift from a TV drama she'd watched recently. And then she gets hysterical and grabs him and won't let go, screaming that he can't leave her alone. Passersby thought Lu Xu was a very bad person. He put his hand on his sister's head and tried to comfort her as best he could. Of course he wasn't going to leave her. 
and he told his sister that she needed to watch as little unnecessary stuff on TV as possible. He finally bought a house, and from now on, they would no longer suffer and be in need. She jumped on his neck with happiness. She also dropped her new toy and almost knocked him over. Would she no longer eat unhealthy snacks? Would he really buy a house? She was willing to help him with the stall and offered to earn money together and pay off all the debts. Lu Xu told his sister not to give up her favorite snack so easily, and they're going to the movies tonight for a good movie. They finally have their own home, their own hearth, a sanctuary. It is so important for everyone to have a home of their own. Lu Xu is trying to make the Seven Stars Dagger obey his will. It's not easy. He tries to focus all his attention and will on controlling that dagger. He throws the dagger with terrible force at the target and orders him to stop at nothing. The dagger is really very sharp. It flew through and sliced the tops off a wooden chair, and it did it all on the first try. And then his little sister came upon Lu Xu and started hitting him on his stupid head with a hammer. You can't mess with furniture. It's not a toy. With a gesture of her hand, she shows her brother as if he were the footman. She needs to cut another pear, two apples, and peel six oranges. Looks like she found a use for her magic dagger. The older brother asks his sister if she's hungry. She is always sleepy after a meal. I guess it's about time. Xiao Yu starts yawning heavily. Lu Xu finishes peeling the apple, but she tells her big brother she's not sleepy at all, and she's not so sleepy. Lu Xu instructs Xiao Yu, it might be worth thinking about how to discover his new abilities need to break through the next nebula. It's possible to change your diet and make it better, more flavorful. Now they have the opportunity to eat well, and after that, you can eat whatever you want, whenever you want, and in whatever quantities you want. All the windows in the house close quickly at night, so no one can get in while the owners are asleep. Quickly translate the alarm clock and set it to ring in the morning. To avoid oversleeping in the morning for important events, the bulb is turned off by a switch. The whole room is dark. All the little sister says is not to disturb her in any way. She will enjoy a sound and healthy sleep. Lu Xu likes her attitude and says no problem, no one will bother her. And she starts counting lambs, fluffy and beautiful. How many jumped over the fence so she can go to sleep? She's still counting lambs and trying to sleep. Her older brother plays her a song on his cell phone. It's like a lullaby. To a lullaby, she will quickly fall asleep quietly at night and warm. Sleepy, 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 your mommy dear's hand will always protect you from all the worst. Hurry up and go to sleep. All the warmth around you belongs to you. Sleep sweetly, and everything will be smooth. Something Lu Xu started to pull back and he was in pain. It's starting to get scary. Suddenly he fumbles for his little sister's diary. I wonder what she's writing. What this little girl is doing that could be. And then he tries to read the title on the cover of this notebook. It's an owl eagle raven swallow sparrow bird. There's something incomprehensible on the cover. He scrutinizes the outside of this notebook. He's still deciding whether to open it or not. And suddenly there's a cheeky bird up there that looks like a black sparrow. And it sits on top of this book and flutters its wings. The bird declares Lu Xu this workbook immediately needs to be put away. You know what the young fella said to the little bird. What goes down is gone. And he better give that notebook back. There was a bright blue glow that this bird began to emit. Lu Xu tried his best to pounce on her and take away this diary and at the same time tear this bird with anger. The cheeky sparrow was trying to evade Lu Xu and the guy was like a cat trying to catch up with the bird. And then Sparrow watched his opponent's actions out of the corner of his eye. It was an incredible fight. The bird imagined himself as an American soccer star. He's a Premier League champion. He's dodging his opponent. And that's when he got back from Lu Xu. Lu Xu falls with all his might and hits his head on the floor. Damn, that really hurt. At least he didn't lose his teeth. And then little sis calls out to him. He turns his head. She looks like a witch from his nightmares. She seems to have broken through the first nebula. The guy's hair jumped on his head, and his heart didn't pop out. No one had ever scared him like that before in his life. He starts blaming his dear baby sister for almost giving him a heart attack very late at night. And then there's that cheeky bird that's sitting on Xiao Yu's head. He's going to take care of it. And then it turned out to be her sister's new ability. She noticed the black hole in the star chart, then thought of that sparrow in her dream. All she wanted to do was take it out, and the black hole sucked it in. She sits quietly on the couch with a pillow and counts birds. Lu Xu doesn't understand why everything is so abstruse. Now this sparrow is hers. With an approving gesture from his older brother, let her do whatever she wants with him. But unfortunately, it's only a soul, not a material entity. And it can't eat. Sis's new ability is a black hole that can only suck in one soul. When a new one comes in, the old one disappears, so it's possible to absorb other souls. To select among them, for example, the most useful domestic labor force or something like that. 
She embarrassedly replies to her brother that she has no idea how it all works or how it all works. He suggests his sister try something in the middle of the night. It will be interesting. They're going somewhere unknown and very late. Lu Xu wants to find a special substance to capture and hold the soul. This is what he was told about in his training. Xiao Yu began to pester her older brother with questions about where they are now. Because this is a very dark and smelly place, he is absolutely sure that they need to stay here. The supposed place is the hideout of the most evil creature in the world. And my sister asks if it could be the king of the golden horns. Lu Xu reassures her and says it's just an experimental facility anyway.